Hi, I'm Stephen Weber, and you're watching The Claws Corner because Rich Sear was a sick student. Welcome to the latest episode of The Claws Corner. Today's guest is a model, actress of both stage and screen, writer, producer, and voice actor. She began her career at the very young age of nine years old and has not looked back since. Her stage credits include The Diary of Anne Frank, Criminals in Love, The Mound Builders, You Can't Take It With You, How Could You, Mrs. Dick, and many more. Her television credits include Hot Wheels, The Littlest Hobo, The Undergrads, Adderley, Night Heat, Street Legal, and many more. Her movies include Running, Happy Birthday to Me, Funeral Home, Deadly Eyes, Curtains, and many, many, many more. So without further ado, Please welcome the once nominated for the best performance by an actress in a leading role Genie Award, Leslie Donaldson to the Claws Corner. <laughs> Leslie, how are you? I'm good. How are you? That was I fun. I'm doing very well. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for being on the show. Sure. Yeah. My pleasure. So, so it's, I'll just tell my audience how you and I got in touch. I think it's a funny story. Yeah. I love horror movies from the 80s. I, and my girlfriend or wife, really, we're, we're engaged. We're not exactly married. So. <laughs> She always gets mad whenever I say girlfriend. <laughs> Whatever. We're together. Anyway, yeah. so she's not really into it. So showing her happy birthday to me, the original 1981 version, the only one that really counts, in my opinion. But uh, she was, the first scene, she goes, wait a minute. I know her. I went to school with her. I said, what are you talking about? And then I looked you up on Facebook, contacted you, and here we are. Here we are. Yeah. Yep. So, so yeah. Uh, I want to start with something because I now that we're friends on Facebook, I see what you're doing in real time. Yeah, <laughs> I want to talk about Orphan oh Black Echoes. What is that? Yeah. Uh, so you remember the Orphan Black series? No, I don't. Back in the okay, uh, it's it's got a lot of uh, Golden Globes and Emmys actually except for the lead actress in it. Um, they're doing a it's like a a, a, a new version of it. It's okay. a, it's sort of continuation. So it's that's why it's Orphan Black Echoes. Different people in it different actors um, and I just play um, I play a host who introduces the lead character part sorry about that noise it's going to do that every now and then um, and I introduce the lead actor who's uh, comes out and explains what he's doing with his uh, genius uh, foundation oh. what he's doing he's like it's all about cloning um, mm -hmm. and uh, getting rid of you know bringing great minds and putting them in young people Definitely sounds so, like something I would like. I'm surprised I never yeah, heard of it. Yeah, very sci-fi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, from what I saw, did you record that today, or was it just airing today? Because I saw. Uh, it no, it's, I no. So I filmed it. I filmed it last Monday, and believe me, oh. let me tell you, I'm I'm not good at doing informational stuff. Like when I have to memorize lines and I have to give information, I have to in front of an audience. I have to impart information. I can never remember my damn lines. <laughs> well, you know what's when funny? I'm personal, you can remember better because you can personalize it, right? But yes. when you just have to give out like data points of information and you have to do it in front of an audience, um, I, I, I'm not good at that. So I was really <laughs> terrified and uh, uh, I, I was, sh I was shaking. I mean, uh, the adrenaline was so amazing. Like I so had a lot of adrenaline from that shoot that, that I literally took me a week to recover. Oh my God. I guess it could be old age too, you know, but uh, it's like. I was just like, oh, shaking whole time. And it's just for a little host role. It's not even anything, you know, big and major. But I, I got to watch the two leads actually uh, do some really interesting work. So in, in that regard, I, I think it's, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be in the room. So that's yeah. what that is. It's coming out, I think, in uh, April. I think it airs in April as a television series. All right. I will definitely check yeah. that out. Yeah, so, check it out. I mean, I'm surprised you're still nervous. I understand the part about forgetting because you're going to see me look over to my left. That's where I have a list of notes so I can go yeah. back and refer to what I'm talking about because I know if I don't sure. do that, I'm going to be like, yeah, Leslie. Uh, uh, yeah. What, 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 what? <laughs> so I completely understand that though. But I mean, yeah. you've been doing this, as I mentioned in the intro, since the age of nine. You yeah. went to the, uh, was it Toronto T International Top Models? Yep. I wow. was an international top model for a while. Yep. I uh, did a lot of Sears catalog stuff and some runway stuff and, uh, you know, covers of this certain Mac McLean's magazine, I think I did a cover of and the Sears catalog cover. I mean, I, I, all that happened when I was a kid. And then I, I grew this way instead of this way. <laughs> <laughs> so I became too 
I guess, voluptuous to be a model. Which I think is kind of funny because I've seen movies and pictures of youth, you know, doing my research yeah. and there's not one picture I could see where you were too this way yeah, or this I know. way. Which, did you ever, it's crazy. I'm sure, what was that? I said, it's crazy. I mean, I look at stuff on TV today and I watch a lot of news from the States and um, they're, the, half the people that run these commercials probably aren't in the union. They're probably uh, non-union actors or performers, but um, they look like real people. And the thing is back in the eighties, if you, you could never be a heavy person mm -hmm. and do a commercial yep. ever, you would never see that. So um, I'm, I'm glad it's moving away from that because it should. Yep. And, uh, you know, but back when I was doing it, you had to be real. You had to be anorexic. Yep. It's terrible. Well, did you ever, I'm sure you know the show, My Three Sons. Yes. Yeah. And yes. I interviewed oh, yeah. Stanley Livingston, who played Chip. Yeah. He was in a movie. I can't remember exactly. It was, it was with uh, uh, George Papard. It was, it was a Western. I can't remember the name of it right now, but they told okay. him, if you don't lose more weight, you're going to be kicked off the movie. I cannot imagine that happening Isn't now. Isn't that crazy? Now yeah. people would be you know, it's canceled for life. They'd be like, I yeah. can't believe he said that or she said that. You'll never work in Hollywood again. It was the exact opposite of what happened back then. They didn't care. It's just like going back even further. I've read yeah. stories about uh, Judy Garland. Yeah. She would take a, her mother, would. they would make her not eat. One time she, when she finally went to rehab because she was off drugs, she was so worried about being heavy. She was on drugs. Then she almost lost her role. There was a, they showed the headline in the paper. It said like, is Judy Garland too fat for Hollywood or something to that effect? And Isn't so she went crazy? back on drugs and that they said like, she would take a pill to wake up, take a pill to go to sleep, take a yep. pill to stay skinny. It's yeah. just completely it's changed. A terrible, it's a, it was a terrible time, really. I mean, the golden age was great. It produced a lot of wonderful movies, but it was a terrible time to be, a, especially a woman. I'm surprised that, that happened to the, to the ship guy, but uh, you know, but it, cause they were a little bit more lenient with men. Right. But yeah. uh women couldn't be if you were going to be in, on camera you had to be really you know you had to be super thin and gorgeous yeah. i was always the fat friend which is funny because i <laughs> i'm still looking for if you could ever find me a picture where they considered you fat i would love to see that because <laughs> well, I, couldn't, I, I mean i even saw the sears catalog there yeah. was no fat well, on you at all no i know deadly Ops. i was the fat friend oh Martha. yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh man i want to so get to that later because i love that yeah oh. yeah well, how did you get found at age nine? So I started just started doing uh, uh, all different classes. So I, I went into modeling. You know, my mother, I saw my mother model when she was younger and I thought I could do that. You know, that would be fun. And so she enrolled me in classes, modeling classes at International Top Models. And I apparently was good at it. So um, they signed me and sent me out. And then eventually commercials happened. But I was also at that time tap dancing I was taking my singing at uh, the Royal Conservatory of Music. Mm -hmm. uh, I was doing the modeling and I was taking acting classes. So I was oh. kind of, you know, starting to be a performing monkey at nine, but I wanted to, like I was, it wasn't, I was, I was forced to, I wanted to. So I did all of that. And then, uh, uh, so the modeling and then commercials started happening. And then from commercials, they started auditioning for television stuff, television movies, um, series stuff. And then, then the, the features happened. Wow. film so Everything just it snowballed. was kind of like a yeah it was just kind of like a natural progression for me to sort of you know get this little kind of fun career happening for me when i was younger You're quite the overachiever so, i could see that well a little bit i mean i, I was a perfectionist to say the least <laughs> well who's marjorie purvey marjorie purvey was my acting teacher she was uh a, a highly thought of in the city um she did oh god i'm not gonna remember names um the guy that wrote the drowsy chaperone that one I Martin, know. somebody Martin. Uh, anyway, he went there that. and um, again, here we go with the names, uh, the director of the entity. Oh, I Sydney love Fury. that movie. I know who Sydney you're talking Fury. about. Yeah, yes. Sydney Fury went there, went to her. Wow. So he, she had some, you know, pretty established people taking wow. classes from her and she was really great. She covered everything. She covered improv. She covered scene studies. She covered radio, like wow. radio plays. Um, she did she did everything she did the whole gamut wow she was really amazing woman yeah you really got to work with some great people from the very beginning i did i did i was very lucky yeah now yeah. did you have to um were you, did you have to be accepted by that school it was i'm sure they didn't just take anybody 
So, no, yeah, you had to you had to do a little, you know, a yeah, little uh, song and dance. Yeah, 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 little monologue. You had to, you know, you had to. She didn't take just anybody. You did. You went in and you did your monologue, and then she was like, "Great, great, let's start next week, whatever." And so, uh, but I did it in a class. Okay. So it wasn't just one on one. It was me with the, in a class with other people, which was great because you got to improv. So I got to learn how to do a lot of improv, and I love improv. Yeah. That's I've always me. kicked myself for not going to Second City. Like I should have gone to Second City because that sort of that that would have been a good fit for me. But I just I never I never went down that route. Yeah. So because you, but I I did do a lot of like um, uh, vo- um, background t- uh, talking in the series show. I had, was part of a loop group, and the other people in the loop group were Second City. So I got to spar with them <laughs> in the in the studio. So that was fun. Now, in your movies, I know they're scripted, but they give you a chance and some, some of the directors more lenient than others to improv your lines. Uh, eh, not really. I mean, I pretty had much had to stay on the book, you know, okay. like I could paraphrase a bit here and there. But uh, I would love to work with directors that do that. And I think Mike Lee is one of them that that mm-hmm. does it. Um, uh, obviously Woody Allen, but uh, never mind. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> you don't talk about him anymore. Yeah. Um, I think Mary Levinson yeah. used to do that with like, I mean, the, if you just like watch Diner, that had a lot of that had to be off the cuff. Yeah, I interviewed you an know? actor who um, worked. He started his on the Wolf of Wall Street, and then Martin Scorsese mm-hmm. loved him, and he said that Martin Scorsese actually encouraged improvisation. He didn't want okay. people. He didn't want people to be just reading the lines because it didn't seem natural. He wanted them. To, and in Wolf of Wall Street, he was originally going to school to be a financial advisor. So he said it was perfect. His audition, he was able to know all the terminology. So Martin Scorsese said, right. yes. So and he hired him for like four or five different roles after that, just because he loved the fact he does have that ability, which is tough right. because over the years I've done comedy, I've done other things. And I love like you just off the cuff, but, Sometimes yeah. I mean, then let me ask you if, if you work like this. If I think too much about it, my brain freezes. But if yes. I just go out there completely, my well, it's not too hard for my mind to be empty. There's not a lot out there. But <laughs> if that, if I go out there not even thinking about anything, then I can just go on for 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. If I go out there and say, you know what, for the next 20 minutes, I'm just going to mess with the audience. I'll just sit there going, yeah. hi, <laughs> how are you? Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, absolutely. I, it's better. That that, that explains the whole, uh, when you think I'm funny, you think I'm, when I'm a joke, like I'm a yeah. clown, you think I'm, that explains that, how that, why that worked, because I could just see, he just went, go Bashi, go do your thing. I and, love you know, capture it, right? So, um, yeah, you can't think too much about it. And that's what happened to me on Monday when I was doing the orphan thing. I was thinking too much about, you know, the lines and everything. <laughs> it messed me up a lot of the time. So you just got to be sort of, it's got to be in your bones. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm yeah. glad you survived. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I survived. You mentioned that, that you got the love of modeling from your mother. Where'd you get the love of singing from? Uh, again, from my, my parents. My father was an opera singer. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and um, uh, my mother sang in the uh, Gilbert and Sullivan operas back in, when she was younger. Wow. And um, so I guess I inherited a voice. And so my, I, they put me in with their singing teacher because they both went to um, Jean Innes, who was the teacher I went I took from at the conservatory. And they put me as, at a young age because you kind of got to get it in at, at a young age to start training for opera, opera singing. And by the time I hit 14, 15, I was like, I don't want to sing opera. Ew. I want to be Chrissy Hyde. Yeah. I want to be Ed Wilson. I want to be Stevie Nicks. I don't want to be an opera singer. Lo, 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 lo. You know what I mean? I don't, that's not me. That's not who I am. So I got, I quit. And I went to uh, a lady that is one, one of my dearest friends, Georgina Johnson. I went and took singing lessons from her. She was a rock. She was in a band. She was a rock singer. And she knew how to blend the head and the, and the chest voice really well. So, yeah, I went there. <laughs> Are you able to hit those high notes? Were you able to, at least back then? Yeah, back then. Back then, I haven't. I don't sing I, as much as I should, and um, I, yeah, I, I don't know if the muscle has to be trained always. <clears throat> you have to keep it uh, pliable, and I just haven't. <laughs> well, I, I mentioned that you did a lot of stage work. So, yeah. did you do any musicals? Uh, no, I auditioned for musicals, um, and I did get into Girls in the Gang um, in uh, the Grand Theater in London. Mm-hmm. Um, but I 
chose to do You Can't Take It With You instead because I got offered that part first. Yep. So I guess, you know, it, I should have taken it, the, the the musical Girls in the Gang, because it was a musical and I should have jumped at that chance. But, you know, I never really, I don't, it's never really saw myself in musical theater. I don't, there's, it has to be a specific musical. <laughs> I would like hair or something oh, like that that, be, that I'd wanted to. Yeah. Yeah, no, so, that, um, that'd be a good really one to start with. And, yeah, yeah, something funky and, you know, hip and rocky, rock and rolly sort of. Very cool. But, yeah. Well, so did you, for, after modeling, did you go right into stage work or did you go into television? What was, what was the so next? I start, yeah, I started doing commercials. So oh, I think commercials. my first commercial was a Ford car commercial that played during the hockey game uh, on TV, not on the big jumbotron, but on TV. So yeah. um, that was the first commercial I got. And then I got other commercials that are blurred, blurry to me now. I mean, I guess the most funny one that I remember was I was a zest girl I got to be the zest girl and I was really nervous about the shower scene (laughs) but uh what was funny about that is that a couple of years after I did that commercial um they were looking for another zest girl (laughs) they were like we want a Leslie Donaldson type and I'm like hello I'm here (laughs) that's (laughs) funny (laughs) No, but no, they didn't want, they wanted someone kind of like me, but not me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, for, it, you know? for, in, in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, you were the person to go to. You were the it thing. Yeah. You had, I was, just, yeah, I was like the girl next door, I guess, you know. Um, you know, I was Heather from Carol. You know, I was like the wide-eyed and like, oh, what's going on? You know, long hair kind of. <laughs> which I have so, to yeah. say, it's like. Um, let's talk about that movie because I, I yeah. watched that for the first time uh, a couple nights ago, and I, I love that movie. It was originally called yeah. Prize in the Night. Yes. Why did they change the title? Um, well, what I <laughs> what I heard back then is that it sounded too pornographic, uh-huh. and also it it was confused a lot with Prom Night because Prom Night was shooting at around the same time uh-huh. as as Funeral as Prize in the Night, and um, I think it was they settled on funeral home because it was for, I think the American company or the American distribution thought that was a better title and more representational of what the movie was. And I, I agree. Uh, I was just talking to Bill for it the other day, actually, he's going to be 90. And I'm like, we got to get you some kind of special award, dude, because like you've done stuff. Like you're, a, you're, a, he's an icon, right? Oh, yeah. He wrote going down the road. He wrote that. And that's like an iconic Canadian film that he has to be, somehow given some kind of special honorary uh award life lifetime lifetime achievement award of some sort you know and so i'm that's my mission this year is to do that for him but he's going we should redo it like you know do a sequel to it or you should do it again you should you should you could be Kay hotry now you could be her role and i'm like yes i can because i think i'm older than her that would be, than she was when she did it that would be great i would love that the yeah. remake but now you play that but character. I play grandma yeah, yeah. Well, you know, they never know. Talk on wood. Fingers crossed. Well, Somebody you know, watching out there. <laughs> anybody watching this right now? Let's let's do a remake. Exactly. Of... Yeah, yeah. Well, I saw on YouTube that was from 2015. It was at the Beverly, I think it was, and they had a Bill Fruitt triple feature. And she, they did. Somebody was interviewing. That was... was that put together by Quentin Tarantino? It was. It yeah. was put together by Quentin, and um, he sent me a message and said, "I'm doing this in." on this particular day and funeral home will be one of them. And I said, does that mean, does that mean I need to be in Hollywood then? Like, do I need to be there? And he goes, well, if you're in town, yeah, come by the theater and we'd love to interview you. Yeah. So I was all nervous. I was thinking, oh, I might be meeting Quentin Tarantino tonight, you know, like my dream, right? Cause I, I love his movies. I'm a huge fan. Yeah. And he's a huge fan of the stuff I was in. And he's a huge fan of Bill Fruitt. And I keep telling Bill that. I keep saying, you know, Quentin thinks you're great. He thinks like you're the best, one of the best Canadian directors. And he's like, oh, stop. <laughs> and he's very flattered and, and honored. But so I went down there and I showed up uh, and I went in and I did a little interview with the guy. It was uh, He wasn't there, Quentin, but uh, his second in command or whatever, Paul Quinn, I think his name is, he interviewed me. So that was fun. Very good. Now, let, let's talk about this, because you mentioned Kay Hawtrey. She was your co-star yeah. in the movie. Yeah. You had a good experience on the film. Yes. What about, what about Kay? 
Mm, not so much. Not so well, much. And I don't really know why, because I never saw it. I never, I like, either I was oblivious or I just never saw what was going. I never registered what was happening between her and Bill. And I think she just felt that, um, if he felt he, she, he was too hard on her or it, she just didn't feel comfortable shooting it for some reason. Yeah. She, she did an amazing job though. I mean, she oh, yeah. was fantastic in the movie, right? Yes. But I think she always felt like she was being tested or um, picked on, I think is the only term I can come up with from Bill. Yep. And I yeah. never saw it, but you know, apparently yeah. that's what she felt. Well, because you were what, 15 years old at the time, I think? I was yeah. 15, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I saw the the making of The Shining. It was um, it was Stanley Kubrick's daughter was filming at that time, and I guess the way yeah. Stanley Kubrick treated Shelley Duvall at that time, he was, had her in tears the whole time. But that brought out the best performance in her. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I mean, it's you know, nowadays you can't get away with that yeah. crap. You know what I mean? Like you just can't. You know, you you'd be um, called up in front of the board right because oh know, yeah and, and, and that's a good thing because you know it's not trusted actor being able to do their their work you know and able to create on their own uh and nurture that in them but bully them in making them feel like you know this is the only way i'm going to get this kind of performance out of you is to kind of treat you like crap is yeah. doesn't fly anymore no no definitely i agree that. with you I agree with that, yeah. but definitely get some good performances. Another actor, yeah. which I know one of your favorite movies is The Exorcist, William Friedkin. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you remember the scene? Oh, obviously, you remember the scene where he gets pushed out. Father Karras gets pushed out the window and he rolls down. And the other priest, you could see him shaking like this as he's looking over the dead body. Yeah. Um, what happened was right before that scene, he said, William kept him saying, you don't, you don't seem terrified enough. You don't seem like you're really affected by it. So you'll see, yeah. trust me, he goes, yeah. So right before he went, boom, slam. Oh, I had that happen to me. <laughs> yeah, really? And then they started filming. So what movie yeah. did that happen to you on? It happens to be in a stage play. Um, oh, Ari Van Frank. Yeah, because I was doing um, still photos in between. Uh, I had a monologue in between set changes. And there would be a picture of me up on the screen, <clears throat> on the curtains, uh, you know, with listening to my what I was talking about on the speaker. And the last one, the last still was, you know, the Gestapo comes, right? And so the director says, oh, you know, you know what this picture is. You know what we have to take this picture of. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I know. He goes, so I'm going to do something to you. And it just keep going. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> 15, I'm still 15 at this time, 15, turning 16. And he kind of slowly wobs, you know, walks towards me in a weave and he takes his hand and he goes, smacks me right across the face. I was like, oh, he got the shot he wanted, but he didn't trust. Like I could get there myself. Right. They heard it in the other room. Oh my God. They heard it in the other room. And there was a, he left a mark on my face. Wow. And that was like, and he got taken down. He got dressed down by the assistant director, the stage manager, all the adults in the room were like, what are you doing? What did you think? What's wrong with you? you know what I mean? Which now he'd be true. arrested. Like, yeah, his he'd be arrested. Be over. Yeah. I, be I over. had a friend whose his friend worked with Mia Farrow in some play, and mm -hmm. they fired Mia Farrow because she did the same thing to another actress. Oh. And they said, you know what? You are done. We don't care who you are. Get yeah. leave, leave the play. So yeah. you definitely don't. Yeah, you can't do that shit now. You just can't. It's, it's, yeah. it's yeah, it's it's not. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's just, nope. <laughs> nope, yep, nope. Yeah, not acceptable. Yeah. yeah, not acceptable. Exactly. I want to stick with funeral home for a minute because I heard mm -hmm. this story and I want to get you, get your reaction on this. I heard that the the movie had a profound experience on the men in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Michael Ironside when you need him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is what I this is what he told me. I don't know. He could have been just joking around probably more than likely he was joking around but he said oh yeah i was in mexico and i went to see your movie and i said i looked around me and i saw all these guys with their hands on their heads and i'm like ew like what <laughs> I said, you're lying but he said he told me that he said you're a you're a huge hit in mexico I said, yeah. well, maybe I should move there then. <laughs> Get more work. <laughs> well, from what from what I read, besides not only being yeah. a sex symbol of 15 years old to the Mexicans, <laughs> um, you were also more popular than Jamie Lee Curtis as a scream queen. Really? That's what, no, not that's anymore. What I read. <laughs> that... 
<laughs> not anymore. I have this fantasy that Mike White, if you're listening, would would put us together in a white lotus. <laughs> Jamie and I. <laughs> I think you know. What? I'd love to spar with her. She'd be so much fun. You have you have a lot of great ideas. We have to make this happen somehow. Yeah, I don't know how, do. but I wish I had some kind of connections here. But I would love to see all of this happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't care. It could be in China. It could be in Hawaii. It doesn't matter. Let's let's put us together in the same hotel. See what happens. <laughs> now, in funeral was that your first leading role? Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Well, now, speaking yes. of I mean, in film. Lines, yeah. what was that? I mean, in film, not in television. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I yeah. want to talk about your television work after because yeah. I did see a lot of, they have on YouTube, they have basically the best of Leslie Donald, Donaldson. I love <laughs> it. I watched so many different things and it was great. Oh, dear. But, but with Funeral Home, you mentioned that, oh, yeah, be afraid, be very afraid. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, mentioned learning your lines. That must have been uh, difficult because you had a lot of lines to learn. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, you don't learn them all. Like, yeah, you learn them as you go. And um, and you have to be very well aware, well aware of the story, obviously, because they don't film in sequence. They film, you know, all of they film the last scene first. You know what I mean? Like they can just they go everywhere. Yeah. Um, thankfully, they didn't do that with the last scene first. But um, yeah, I mean, you just have to be pliable and know where you are in the story, in the arc of the story and and be able to fit those emotions into that scene. But um I was, it was okay for me back then because I had a fresh brain. <laughs> so I was able to remember things easier, but now it's like, oh my God, how many lines? Oh, I don't want me. I just want a few lines. Just give me a few. <laughs> I just want I just want to stare at the camera and smile for a while. Yeah, that's it. And just they're like, I'm doing a self-tape later about a waitress who says, Hey, you, you know, hey, Paul, you hear it's your wife. <laughs> he says, No, I'm not here. He's not here. <laughs> That's what I like. <laughs> All right. Drop the mic. I'm out of here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. Uh, well, I'm, you brought up a great point. And I, I want your opinion on this because you've done, you know, television, stage, screen. When in, obviously, when you're on stage, everything's done in chronological order. Now, when you're doing a movie, you mentioned that they sometimes they could film the middle scene first, the last scene. Yeah. Is it more difficult to find the right emotion like they'll say you're filming a love scene one minute and also all right next next scene's gonna be like where you end up your over his body with a knife and you have to yeah. completely change the character in the way they're the mind the, the mind frame is that really difficult for you or it's just that you because you see i have to say and i'm being dead serious i kept on saying this to uh sarah i said she is such a natural you are so believable Aww. in all your movies oh thank you so much that's yeah. uh, believe me it's it's it, I have, I share Diane Keaton's, um, she says this, and I'm, I'm glad I heard it from somebody famous like that, is that it, it's, it's hard to do. It's hard. It, 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 she finds acting hard. And you look at her and you go, what? Yeah. She's so natural, right? Like, it's hard to be, uh, you know, to know where your strength, like Meryl Streep's strength is in her eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, Jessica Lange's strength is in her mouth, the way she moves her mouth a lot. Um, so you get to know what works for you, right? To get the camera to love you. And so um, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. It's hard strength? to forget. It's hard to forget that, sir. I think it's my eyes too. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think it's my eyes. Um, but it, it's just hard to forget. Like you, you have to be so aware of it right there, but you have to forget it as well. And it's hard. Yeah. Cause that's like the, th that's the person you're really working for is that camera right there. You know, it's, it's not really the character and yet you know, it is. <laughs> no, I agree with you. I think it is your eyes because watching you just as you're seeing as the cameras on you and you're watching your expression on what's coming at you, you look either terrified or confused. Yeah, like I said, it looks yeah. so believable in the movies. Like Kurtz right. is one example where it's just like, it's I yeah. yeah I think definitely your eyes and yeah you, you portray yeah. every emotion so convincingly oh good well thank yeah. you very much thank you <laughs> that's nice to know <laughs> and one one of the things uh, I, I was reading about uh, Bill Fruitt that maybe got Kay a little mad was that he would say you know what all right I know you have the day off but come in we're gonna film this right now so he did a lot of that where he would just say all right now to we're gonna me. change everything let's do this and so. <laughs> That would definitely be, I mean, like you said, you were 15 years old, your mind is fresh, your brain, you know, yeah. everything's, everything's like full of energy, fun. And now would she yeah, yeah. like, I don't really have, I don't want to do this right now. I wasn't oh, ready. Of course. Yeah. 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 So maybe, I'm not ready. Yeah. She did that to me once. 
<laughs> he was like, I wasn't supposed to come in until the afternoon. And he was like, they changed, he changed the scene. It was the scene where we're walking through the woods or something. And uh, he's like, why weren't you here? And I'm like, I wasn't called in until this uh, later time. <laughs> like, what the heck? That was the only time, but he, he kind of did it jokingly, but yeah, you know, and, and, you know, cause you know, he knew, everyone knew he had that kind of sense of humor, but sometimes you couldn't tell if it was, you know, yeah. a joke or not. And maybe it wasn't a joke so much for Kate. Well, but also, as you mentioned, you don't learn all of your lines at the same time. So what if no. you didn't have those lines prepared and he's saying, That's right. hey, we want you to do this monologue now. Yeah. Yeah. That's, there's that, that to it as well. So um, yeah, I, uh, uh, I only had that happen once with him. Yeah. And it was, it was a lot of dialogue, but, Somehow I managed to make it work. <laughs> you have to, you have to do what Marlon Brando used to. From what I heard, he used to have the lines either on the wall, even sometimes yeah. taped to the actor's chest. His chest, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Well, I remember we were doing Hearts of Fire. Fiona had to uh, tell Bob Dylan what his line was when it was on him, and say, "So now you say this." Told him, and then he would say, like, "That's what? funny." <laughs> like, it's like that's a long shoot. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Anyway, I want to yeah. well, I want to get back to your movies after, but but you you mentioned some of your stage work. You mentioned Diary of Anne Frank. Was that one of your yes. first stage roles? Yes, it, it was. It was, it was, it was your first, first one. Yeah. yeah, it was my first one, which you was did some movie. heavy stuff. And the, the yeah. other one I want to talk about was that I would love to see this place. It sounds very intense, but kind of funny. It's yeah. uh, how could you, Mrs. Dick? <laughs> yes, how could you? That was a song back then. Um, so it, it's based on Evelyn Dick, who was accused of killing her husband and his torso was found on the Hamilton mountainside yep. by some kids, three, three little kids. And he just, it was just his torso. Yeah. Well, what was but, the one thing that gave him away? The one thing was, <laughs> <laughs> I'll sing you the song. It's like, she cut off his head. She cut off his arm. She cut off his leg. How could you miss his dick? How could you miss his dick? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was that. That feature that they could pinpoint who he was, because I think he only had one testicle. Yep. So, you know, so they kind of zeroed in on, you know, him, I guess, being the victim. That what was the song my mother used to sing to my brothers and I every night before we went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mom. <laughs> <laughs> so th that's actually a true story. I never heard this story. Yeah. It's based on a true story. Yeah, it is. Yeah, she was quite the sensation in the 40s. And, um, you know, she was a, a, in the in right place at the right time. She could have been a big movie star because she yeah. was very glamorous and, you know, very innocent and just, you know, like childlike. So um, I pulled a lot of like Vivian Lee, Scarlett O'Hara out of my butt, along with a little Marilyn. You know? All right. <laughs> Just like, a dash. Just like, oh, you know, like <laughs> clueless. So, but people said I, that that's what she was like, because I would have people who knew her would come up to me in Hamilton when they filmed when I, I played it there and say, "Oh no, she was exactly like that." Yeah, and I was yeah. like, "Well, good." <laughs> now, now, was did no. you ever were you ever on stage? Which I know you you love improvising. Did you ever have to improvise? Because in the middle of one of your dialogue, you said. What is next? What am I going to say? Yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> I have those nightmares where I'm in a play and I'm, I'm like one vivid one I had was I was filling in for Brooke Shields in Greece and I didn't know any of the words and the songs. I mean, I know the songs from Greece, but I was like, just kind of planted there. You yep. know, you just show up on stage and you're that character and uh, like Rizzo, the Rizzo character in Greece. And so I was like, <laughs> those are scary dreams. <laughs> Oh, so, so you never played Rizzo or did you? No, I never did. Oh, okay. I would love to have, that's one I would have loved to have done. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I interviewed Adrienne Barbeau. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. She, I guess she originated that role on Broadway yeah. years ago, years ago. So we were talking about that. And I, yeah. That is one of my all time favorite musicals. Oh, me too. I love it. I love yeah. it. I remember seeing it in 75, I think, 74, 75. 77. The movie came 77. out in 77. Yeah. Yep. The movie came out in 77, but I saw it play like 75. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I saw the play and after I saw the movie and I was so disappointed because I didn't realize at the time, this was years ago, that most yeah. of the songs were written for Travolta and Olivia Newton-John. Like yeah. the one that I want. And yeah. So it's when I saw the the play, it's like, oh, all the good stuff was taken out. But I didn't, you know, yeah. 
I would probably appreciate it more now that I'm older, but yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was like, I felt that way too. I was like, why, where are all the, where are the original songs from the musical? Where did they go? Like some of them were there, like, uh, you know, the, there are worse things I can do. Yes. I could do and stuff like that. And tell me more, tell me more. That was in the play. Yeah, you're the one that I want. Or you're no, the one that more. I want. Oh, no, Grease yeah. Lightning. Grease Lightning. Grease Lightning. Like, yeah. And I, Summer I, Lovin'. Summer Lovin'. Yeah. Summer yeah. Lovin'. Yeah. Yeah. Tell um, more, but you're the one that I, I want was written for the movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot, a lot of songs. I and yeah. I want to actually, I just realized this, and just like you, I'm glad I write things down because I would have yeah. completely forgot about this. I met him because one of my favorite movies growing up in the 70s is The Warriors. And okay. also yeah. The Thing. And I went, actually went to a Warriors convention at Coney Island, and I interviewed two or three of the actors on my podcast. The one person I never interviewed, but I did meet was Thomas G. Waits. And I yeah. know you worked yeah. with him. I did in Diary of Anne Frank. He was yeah. Pater, played the Pater character. And um, yeah, you should interview him. I'm sure he'd love to, you know, come on your show, your podcast. You know, or your, yeah. yeah, I do. I can send him a little, you know, introduction for you. But uh, he's he's always uh, promoting his stuff that he did when he was younger. He was also in, in, in Justice for All with Al Pacino. Yes, I and, love and that American movie. Buffalo. Yeah. Yep. Well, it's funny, cause American Buffalo by David Mamet. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. I just saw that on Broadway, off Broadway recently. It had yeah. uh, Sam Rockwell and uh, Lawrence Fishburne. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That, yep. That's such a great. I, I love pretty much anything David Mamet does. I mean, I love Glenn oh, Gary yeah. and Ross, obviously, but it's just uh, yeah. anything he does is great. It is. And of course, Al Pacino's first lines in this show were like, my mother and I were both like, oh my God. They come out, like, fucking Ruthie, fucking Ruthie, fucking Ruthie. <laughs> like just screaming this long yeah. out. And we're like, oh my God. <laughs> Yeah. The powerful actor, obviously Al Pacino, right? But uh, and then Tom played the younger guy. Yeah, in it. yeah, no, yeah. definitely, I yeah. I could definitely picture. But it's funny because when I met Tom in the at the Warrior convention, I was talking to him about the Warriors and why they killed off his character. He goes, basically, I was an asshole. I said, what do you mean? Because I heard the story, I wanted to see if because you never know what you what you read is yeah. true or not. Yeah, I guess he didn't get along with Walter Hill, so they found a way to kill him off. He goes, eh. him. He goes but <laughs> obviously. His career went on. He's, yeah. um, you know, it's, I didn't realize this until later too that he became an acting teacher. He's an acting teacher, yes. He's yeah, yeah. a really great acting acting teacher, yeah. And he's right now. I think he's shooting a movie or something, or he's directing a movie. So he he keeps all irons in the fire. Oh, very good. Yeah, yeah he seems like a really nice yeah. guy. And please, definitely, we'll talk after yeah. the show's over. I would love to interview. Okay. Him. Sure. I, I love all the things he's done, and like I said, yeah. the three off the bat, and Justice for All, The Thing, and The Warriors, three of my yep. all-time favorite movies. Clan of the Cave Bear. Yes. All right. Yep. <laughs> I almost forgot about that one, too. <laughs> I'm gonna, I think you and I could do, but we can co-interview this one. We <laughs> could, <co> yes. <laughs> Anything, I, anytime I forget maybe, something. Maybe like, we can. Maybe we will. That'll be even more fun. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? We're, we're going to make this happen. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a fun story about him. I have a fun story about him doing Anne Frank. My grandmother was my chaperone because I had to have, you know, I was 15. So um, so he, he and I were going off to memorize some lines. And but first of all, we came into my hotel suite. My grandmother was there to have tea. And so my grandma's got her soap operas on and she's making tea. And she goes out of the blue. Tom, have you ever heard of the word deportation? <laughs> and he's like, Yes, Greg. Everybody called her Grant. Yes, yes, Grant. Why? Why? He goes, because that's what you're going to be if you'd lay a hand on my granddaughter. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> Granny, I will never do that. And so I was like mortified, right? <laughs> that she would say that would just get right out of the blue dam. Yeah, that was funny. That was a funny moment. Seared forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, your grandmother had a, uh, she had a pretty big impact on a lot of people. Another person she had a pretty she big did. impact was Michael Douglas. She did. Yeah, that story. I, I mean, that's a fun story to tell with. I did. I had the part and then I didn't have the part. And the director wanted me and the producers wanted me. But Michael Douglas wasn't sure because I was very voluptuous and I was uh, 14 and he was only 32 at the time. So he felt like I was too. He needed the daughter to be a bit younger. And they were trying to convince him. No, 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 it's fine. You know, you can we'll write a line where it says you are a kid having a kid. So they put that line in the movie. Uh and uh but so i had to go meet him in the hotel and i brought my grandmother along and my grandmother had a face full of fabulous wrinkles like she just had her life on her face and, and we're sitting in there and i'm you know I, my grandma gets invited in too and we're all sitting there and i'm chit-chatting with steven 
And Michael Douglas is just like looking at my grandmother's face, like, <laughs> staring at her. And there was a lull in the conversation and she goes, ah, what are you staring at me like that for? Like this, he goes, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm just, I can't get over your face because you mean with all the wrinkles in it, right? And he goes, no, 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 it's beautiful. You have a beautiful face. He said, I don't ever see anybody that looks like that. All I see are people like with facelifts. <laughs> in Hollywood, you don't understand. You have an amazing face. And so I ended up getting the part. And I was just like, damn, you're coming with me to every damn audition, okay? You're just coming in the room. You're coming with me. Because <laughs> he had, he, he, she charmed him. She had that ability to charm people. Another person so, that was um, influential in your career would be uh, Aunt Sheila. Sheila. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. She gave me my love of horror. Um, I, yeah, I, I went to see horror movies with her when I was like seven or eight. And um, she'd always tell my mother, oh, we're going off to see The Sound of Music or Oliver. We're going to see Oliver. Yeah. And, <laughs> sure and, we uh, are. She, <laughs> she'd take me to the Hammer Horrors and I, um, I just loved it. You know what's funny? <laughs> You, you and I might have the same parents because I'll give you an example. For um, I'm 54, so when Jaws came out, I was seven years old. My brother was right. four, my other brother was five and a half. So I remember my father saying, the first year I came, he goes, "Hey, do you want to go to school tomorrow?" I'm like, "Not really. Do you want to go see Jaws?" So we ended up seeing Jaws that summer and 17 nice. times in the theater. Like I don't know how many times in the drive and this. And oh yeah, fourth year, I loved it. I remember my teacher goes, "Were you sick yesterday?" I said. No, we went to go see Jaws. They called in the house. I told you to fucking lie. Why didn't you lie? <laughs> but my father took exactly. us to see Evil Dead. I'm trying oh, to think nice. of movies, like, like, the movies that, and every time he would bring us to one of these movies, they'd say, oh, the movie might be too intense. My kids could take it. Get them a ticket. Yeah. And so yeah, I yeah, took, yeah. by the time I was 11 years old, I was jaded. I mean, I saw The Exorcist when I was probably nine years old. It didn't nothing really affected me it's just yeah I, yeah, I, I don't know, yeah for some reason and i think the only movie that affected me a little bit was uh the movie phantasm i don't know if you heard of that oh, okay one. yeah yeah i remember that one yep. yep yep i remember when my aunt went to see the exorcist i was so jealous and i was like why can't you because it's, it's, it's restricted you can't come I was, yeah. I was like nine at the time i love it i used to watch the hammer films on chiller theater it was on yes. new york station in in uh, yeah. the u.s I loved it. Well, I used to, yeah, who's yeah. Your, what's your favorite Hammer character? Like for me, I love the Christopher Lee vampire. Yeah, or, Christopher uh, Lee. Dracula. Christopher yeah. Lee. Yeah. Um, and uh, but my favorite Dracula. What I actually really liked Frank Langella's. I thought yes. that was a good one. That was a really good one. Um, but I have to say Gary Oldman because I just love Gary Oldman. He's such a great actor. Yeah. Um, oh, he was. I agree. Pulling it right out all the stops, you know. Um, I love Keanu Reeves. I think he's a lovely person and he's a good action hero, but he in that movie was like, <laughs> no, you know, what? I, no, but he pulled it off. He still did. You know, yeah. he's, he's easy on the eyes and so he's apparently a really nice guy, really nice, like super yeah. person. And that's, that's good. He went to Jarvis. Did you really, how many people yeah. graduated from that school? Every time yeah. I talk to Sarah, she's like, Oh, I know this person. I know that person. Yeah. 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 He, he went to Jarvis after I left. And he only went there for about a year or two. So I don't think he was there for long. I mean, Chris Maypiece was another one. That, I was going to talk to you about that yeah. because she mentioned him first. I love the movie My Bodyguard yeah. with Matt yes, Dillon. Yes, it was a great movie. Yeah. Yeah. So when I watched that with her, she goes, oh, I went to school with him. I said, what are you talking about? And then it was funny because I was watching the, uh, the Best of Leslie Donaldson. I saw that you did a movie called The Undergrads with Chris yes. Maypiece and Art Carney. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I got to act with Art Carney. <sighs> yes. Well, well, let's let's talk about that since we're on that subject. When, yeah, he seems like such a great. I mean, I'm, only from the interviews I've seen him in the shows he's done, he seems like such a fun guy. Oh, he totally was. He was yeah. he was really calming and just lovely personality and funny, just funny, just always you know doing his thing, but not to a point where it was annoying. Like he just he he just was who he was. I mean, he just embodied that character. Yeah, and just a really generous, wonderful man. Now, were you friends with Chris? At, at the school before did no. you know him before um you did that movie? i just knew him through what he was doing in the in the industry oh. so i didn't really i never really interacted with him even in jars because i only stayed there a year so um uh so i didn't really get to know him and but he's a nice guy i mean he was one fun to work with he was fun to work with so you have his info too <laughs> do i have what you have his info too i tried to get hit i tried to oh get i can get yeah sure on facebook you just go on facebook 
and then yeah um, and and I, I'm I still think I'm I'm friends I was friends with him on my other page but I changed my page and then so I'm not I'll have to send him a, a, a little note I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to like sign you up like as um my my now not recruiters a bad word but <laughs> like a finder's fee because yeah yeah exactly a finder's fee yeah oh, what about this guy what about this person like also Lisa Langlois you should or Lynn Griffin yes no yeah. you know what please send them my way because yeah. I actually sure. I was gonna talk to you about Lisa because I know you acted with her in several movies yeah um, in Happy two Birthday movies. Me was one and what was the yeah. other one Deadly Eyes Deadly Eyes yes yes. Daily eyes. <clears throat> yeah, she's great. It was fun, fun to do. Power I around her. The class of eighty four. Oh, she's great in that. I mean, and yeah. she didn't have many lines in that, but she made her character so memorable just by her, her presence and her 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 facial expressions and just the way she looked. It was uh, it was kind of iconic character. Oh yeah, no, definitely. I, I remember, it was funny. That's when Michael J. Fox was just Michael Fox. It was yes, exactly. Yes, I know. Yeah, Michael J. Fox, and I can't remember the other girl's name, but. I forgot, um, but Roddy McDowell was in it. He was a yep. teacher that went crazy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's kind of a classic movie as well. All right. Well, you know what? <laughs> I think I go. think our post <laughs> our post conversation is going to be longer than what we're than the, the actual it's interview. All good. <laughs> <It's> all good. <laughs> I love this. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about Happy Birthday to Me because that. Okay. I, I love that movie. It came out in eighty one, and mm -hmm. so all right. Let's let's go back to running because running came first you played mm -hmm. you did get the the role michael douglas was you, you actually it's funny i was thinking about this because i can't imagine now i i see, heard several stories where you had to meet them in a hotel room i can't imagine that happening now where a young 15 year old goes to meet either a director or an actor in their hotel room now oh it. yeah sudden place was the scene of many crimes um <laughs> <laughs> Um, but uh, thankfully not, not to me, but you know, I've heard yeah. stories, Plaza hotel and, uh, in, in York, Yorkville and, and the Sutton hotel, the big, where the directors and producers would come and stay and you'd go with a casting agent. There'd always be a casting agent or somebody else in the room. Um, you know, with running, I had my grandmother come with me. So, yeah. um, then they were, they were all for it. That was fine. But um, there's been so, there's a lot of horror stories, especially since Harvey Weinstein and all of that crap yeah, happened. Yeah. I mean, a lot of horror stories. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that. Yeah. You, you I skirted away from it. <laughs> you only got slapped across the face. Nothing major. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So. No sexual harassment, just violence. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was a little bit of that from other people. <laughs> <Talk Yeah. about> <laughs> <laughs> you don't escape that. No, those are the days when, like, you know. You know, I was sitting in with Peter Simpson, right, with curtains, and we'd be sitting in his office, and he'd be smoking on a big cigar, and he'd say, you know, inappropriate stuff, like, oh, she got a nice rack on her. I'm like, yeah, she does. You know, I would just, like, agree with him. <laughs> so I guess I was complicit. I don't know. But, uh, I mean, it just, it, it's just sort of that's how people were, right, back yeah. then? You know, it was sort of like, it's not right, but we nobody ever said anything about it. Because look at the movies that were being made. John Hughes movies can never be made today. No. Ever. No. You know, and so like, and yet they're classics, some of them. The Breakfast Club, you know, all those oh, yeah. 16 Candles and that, but you couldn't get away with that kind of stuff now. No. So, I mean, it was just a different time, right? So we put up with a lot more than we probably should have, but it was the business, right? It was just the business. One year movies, <laughs> I <won't, laughs> they will get back to happy birthday to me in a minute, but one yeah. of these movies that we're talking about this, I don't think could ever, ever be made Yes, yeah. I think it was a TV movie. You can correct me if I'm wrong. It was Special People. Special People. Yeah, that was yes. about the famous people players. Yeah, the the, the puppeteer group. Yeah, it and was... Uh, it was they were mentally challenged uh, uh, performers, right? So um, they had those people in the movie, but then they had actors portraying specific people from that troupe that had this. That what happened? Like I throw a temper tantrum in it and. The girl after I did the scene, she was like, "That's like me," and I went, "Yeah, I'm playing you." <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, I mean, so, but uh, I mean, it was Mark Daniels too, right? Like Desi and Lucy, like he did. I love Lucy for them. He was oh, their wow. director, so it was, you know, that was one of the best filming experiences I ever had with special people. I really loved doing that. Well, I love the fact they actually because um, 
Matt Stone, Trey Parker did something similar. They called it was called It's Your News, and they would have people with special needs go out and do the news. And he says, We're not yeah. making fun of them. We actually want to hire them and give them something that's so the yeah. fact that they're doing that. But just listening to some of the dialogue, the part I saw was I think it was a gymnasium, and the woman was yeah. they were really loud and raucous, and you're yeah, yeah. Doing like this, and yeah. the teacher just starts yelling and screaming at them. Yeah, that was Diane Dupuy. <laughs> Oh, Brooke Adams played her, but Diane Dupuy was a yeller and a screamer. Yeah, she she was very. Yeah. I don't know. If, <laughs> I don't know if yeah. she was uh, like a like um, one of those actresses that um, from experience, but she was really yeah. good. Yeah, Brooke Adams. Yeah, method actor. Brooke I don't know if she was a method yeah. actor, but yeah, she's a great actress, Brooke. Yeah, yeah, she was in the Body Snatcher movie with Oh yeah, um, Donald Sutherland. In it. Yeah, so yeah, she did a great job. She got her. She got Diane down, and you know. Uh, Diane was very determined to meet Liberace. She was very determined to get this happening and making it happen. So in that regard, you have to have a lot of respect for that. Oh yeah. No, yeah. I, I mean, the, the yeah. scene that I saw, I definitely wanted to check out the rest of the movie wherever I can find it, but it's, yeah. I just can I never don't... ever imagine them, the, the, the how no. PC our world is now. Some, yeah. And the, the sad thing is that the people that would go to see it would probably enjoy it. It's the people that yes. would never leave their house are the ones complaining and they're unfortunately had the loudest Loudest now, voices. Because, yeah, they're behind the keyboard, yeah. being the keyboard warrior, saying, "I can't believe this." And, yeah, exactly. And like I always say, you can't be more upset than the person the thing happened to. It's like they're having a good time, they're enjoying this. Why are yeah. you so upset? It's not bothering you. So just. Yeah, exactly. No, I feel that way on a regular daily basis. In all oh yeah. Things. <laughs> You and I have that in common because yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always, I always have to say it's like, all right, let me get off my soapbox. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I, I hear you for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was happy birthday to me. I want to get back to that because Jay Lee mm -hmm. Thompson was a director. You worked with so many yes. great directors. I want to talk now for yeah. him. If people who don't know his credits include The Guns and Everone, Cape Fear, and Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. Those are just three. Yeah, just three, and they did a lot more. He did the movie with Shirley MacLaine, and he did a couple of others like big yeah, ones. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was great. Paper. <laughs> it's right down yeah, he, he, he was he was great to work with. He was, uh, you know, he's a funny little guy, you know, man. Uh, he liked to have a paper cup full of blood. Fake blood, obviously, and he'd throw it at people because in the scene, because he wanted, we need more blood. We need more blood. Put more blood. You know what I mean? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> well, it's funny you mentioned that because Quentin Tarantino and Roger Avery have a new podcast. It's called The Video Archives because mm. he and Roger used to work at the video archives years ago. So what they do is yeah. they take these old movies that they watched on beta back in the 80s yeah. and they review them. And one of the episodes was Happy Birthday to Me. Yes. And yeah, they I heard talked, about that. Yeah. You heard that? Yeah. They talked yeah. about that and they said that, I guess, I've, somebody on the set said, you're going too crazy with the blood. You have to comment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think I wouldn't be surprised if somebody did that. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, he was just, uh, he was a little maniacal about it. Like, he just I wanted all the blood and guts to be, let's make it, let's make it gory, you know? <laughs> I think it is gory. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a, it's such a fun movie, though. You can tell I me. Mean, it is. Unfortunately, I wish, I wish you weren't killed off in the very beginning because I. Oh, thanks. <laughs> but your scene definitely. Well, they're trying to portray me as a killer on one of the posters. Oh, so, yeah. Like, that picture of the girl holding the cake. I'm like, is that you? And I'm like. No, I never posed for that, but it does kind of look like me, doesn't it? <laughs> so, what are you trying to imply? <laughs> did they did they have that ending planned, or was that something they made up at the last minute? Because it seems like it was going to be Melissa Sue Anderson. I'm sure I'm not giving away any spoilers. If you haven't seen the movie already, then <laughs> sorry. Yeah, you're but <laughs> 40 did they, years did they really know that that was going to be the ending, or did they just make it up? They were working stuff as they were going. Yeah. Yeah, they That's were working stuff as they were going. I don't even think they knew who they wanted to be the killer, but uh, it ended up being, you know. Yeah. I won't tell it, but anyway, if you haven't yeah. seen it. Yeah, no, uh, you have to check it out. Which was really, you know, what? <laughs> I know. It was it's similar. It's like something from Mission Impossible, the time. Yeah, it was. You know, Mission yeah. Impossible. <laughs> Mission Impossible, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I used to watch that when I was younger. Yeah, yeah. And who, uh, refresh my memory. Who was the actress where you tripped over the dog leash? I know she's. Uh, oh, Frances Highland. Yeah, she was. Uh, she was a legend. She was a big, uh, iconic theater actress. Yes. And uh, yeah, I was very honored to have a scene with her. So um, she's no longer with us, but uh, she's. She was. Uh, I would go and see her in a lot of plays back in the eighties. Yeah. She was really one of the greats. 
Now, is that true? You had a stunt double for that movie? I had a stunt double to pull my, to, to go over the back of the, of the car. And I went, what? Again, I was like, why? I know. Just pull me over the back of the car. Why do you need a stunt double for that? What the heck are you, like, what? <laughs> so it ended up being me. But yeah, I was just, I was like, really silly. Yeah, I know. Well, but you know, it was a big, big Hollywood movie and they have to do their thing and protect their you know, themselves. So. Yep. Protect their assets. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's well, funny. Cause I, um, I saw an interview with Jackie Chan one time and he said he hated doing American movies because over where he films movies in Asia, he said, you know, I get to do whatever I want. I get to do my own stunts in America. They're like, no, no, that's, you have to be way too careful. We can't, if we, if you get hurt, yeah. then this and that. That's right. That's why yep. I find it impressive that Tom Cruise is able to do all his own stunts. Yeah. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Even really dangerous ones. Like, <laughs> yeah. the heck? He's a daredevil, I guess. Yeah. I think either that plus two plus he's probably he's the producer too for most of his movies, yeah. so he has a say in that he could do it. Because I know most of the producers are the ones like, hey, you know what? It's my money. You're not doing anything. You can't get yeah. hurt. You can't afford that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if he's if he's producing it, he can make call the shots. I guess yeah, for sure. Now, how long did it take you to in a Happy Birthday to me to have the makeup applied? It must have taken. Oh, it took a long time. Like a, yeah. a good uh, two hours every day so would yeah. you get up what three o'clock in the morning just to get the makeup applied i'd have to be there around five yeah to get it done like all of us yeah so um and uh <laughs> yeah i remember richard rebier and i went to, on a lunch walk around the block <laughs> i was a kid coming down on his bike he's like oh my god like, holy crap <laughs> what is that we walked along saint catherine's and the cars were like oh you know it was a, it was fun <laughs> Uh, it sounds like fun. It wasn't even Halloween yet, you know. It was like August. Did people know that you were filming a movie there, or they just you just happened well, to be walking? Some of them who I guess yeah, who knew the area well probably knew. Oh, it's a movie. They were care. They, you know, because it, it wasn't. It was August, so it wasn't Halloween. So it wasn't it. like we were dressed up for something. Like, so yeah, so people these laughed or honked or you know, and then we just went back in and got ready to shoot. Now, was that really your head or was it a cast and the scene where Melissa Sue Anderson and her friend come in and the the, the other guy's like, hey, you got to see what I did here. And it looks like, yeah, he has so, here. That, was that really you? That was me for the dark part. Yep. Like I had to go in the table and, you know, they pull the thing off and that's me. And then when he comes in and turns the light on and pulls the eye out, it's a cat. It's a, it's a fake head, obviously. Yeah, I was going to say, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is my eye okay? <laughs> yeah, so... um and that's implying that that character and I had a thing. So, you know, it's yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's just adding another layer. I had a crush on him too, Jack Bloom. <laughs> what was that? I had a crush on Jack Bloom back then. Ah, well, there's, <laughs> I think from what I was hearing about that, you were the youngest person in that film. Yeah. And so they were sort of like a little sorority and they were all friends. And you really, did you have a chance to hang out with them? For the most part. I, I did. I, I hung out mostly with uh, uh, with Tracy, Tracy and I, because she was a year older than me, so we were the youngest. Yeah. And I guess she was youngest when she was there, when I wasn't there. But uh, uh, so Trace, Tracy and I kind of became close, and uh, Lisa. And then, yeah, I would hang out with him when I was there in the green room. There'd be Lenore and Jack and Matt and you know, Richard, whoever would be there. David Eisner and we would all sit around and you know hang out it was fun we had a we all knew each other from the business anyway so we all had i'd see them at auditions and mostly lisa and lenore and um you know and then so we already had a bit of a rapport we already had a bit of like history together so i think that's what made that film work is that everybody kind of knew everybody and liked everybody so and it shows you know what I find impressive because at that time Melissa Sue Anderson was you know Little Miss Sweet and Innocent Little yep. House on the Prairie and then all of a sudden bam she comes out with Happy Birthday yep. to Me so which I think is a smart move because it was it, yeah it's a, sort of like Jessica Biel what she did with uh, she kept well for her she kept on wanting to get fired from that show so she can change her whole image and she did yeah. uh, that that I can't remember what the name of the movie was but it was it was really good it was completely out of character for her but I yeah. think that I think it's good that. So you don't get typecast, you do different types of roles. Exactly. And yeah. Was, to me, she was very believable in that movie. Like it yeah, wasn't like, was. oh, all I see is Laura Ingalls or not Laura, though, whoever her sister's yeah. name was. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, she she uh she she did really good in that movie. She was yeah. uh she had the chops to do to you know, she has the chops. I think she still works. So I think she's yeah. up here now. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. 
Um, I met the other one. I go to different. Uh, I go to a chiller convention in New Jersey. Okay, and, Melissa. Uh, yeah, yeah not, not, not Melissa. The other one. Oh, but yeah, Melissa Sue. Uh, Melissa, Melissa Gilbert. Melissa Gilbert. Melissa Gilbert. Yeah, yeah. yeah and no. her her sister Sarah is the producer. I just. Yeah. I just auditioned for your show. Hire me. <laughs> <laughs> for people who don't we know, we have Sarah. a sort of connection, Sarah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, I'll, if she's, I'm sure she's watching. We'll make sure. Yeah, this yeah. Is. Hi, <laughs> Sarah. Hire her. She's great. <laughs> <laughs> we'll because I'm shameless these days. I don't care. No, you know what? <laughs> I love shameless. When I, it's funny because when I was doing stand comedy, people yeah. would say, "Who's your Who's your agent? How do you get all these shows?" I'm like, "I do it." And they're like, "How do you yeah. do it?" And people, I said, "I said promotion is a completely different animal. You have to go yeah. out there and really promote yourself. Always out there looking." Yeah. For, and that's I am just like you. Whenever I, I'm like, "Yeah, well, you know, hire I me. Mean, you won't be disappointed." Yeah, I don't, I mean, if you don't ask, you don't find out, you're not going to know, right? You know, so you put yourself out there and you try to like, I, I, but people always like say, well, you're very precocious when you were younger. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm precocious now. <laughs> I'm precocious. <laughs> I was something precocious back then. So, uh, you know, I, I aged into my precociousness. Yes. I guess, <laughs> way to say you aged very well. I like that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so back then, was was there a lot of uh, re relationships on that on that movie, or different people just? Well, I think together? there, I think there were. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, if not with the cast, with the crew, because yeah. uh, I kind of had a crush on a driver, and Lenore was, I think, with someone, and um, uh, Lisa ended up with the cinematographer's second cinematographer. Wow. And they had a, a long relationship and moved to LA together and lived together for quite a while. So, uh, but as, as far as the cast, I mean, I don't know what was going on with them, but you know, a yeah. lot of them had their own relationships outside of the movie, but there was a lot of flirtations going on. How can there not be? <laughs> Damn it. Well, the thing is like, even though you were killed off in the very beginning, you're throughout the movie. You got the head on the table. Then you have the yeah. end scene, which, yeah. which I love. That must have been a fun scene to film. Oh, it was, it was a hoot. Like I said, it was a long makeup, but yeah, um, yeah. once once we were, you know, in the makeup and in the chairs and it was, we had a lot of barbs that we would, you know, joke about and stuff like that. And then, you know, it was fun. It was, it was, it was, a, it was like a week long shoot. So uh, they gave themselves a lot of time because they had to get different angles. And back then they, you know, nowadays they work with three cameras at once, right? Yeah. They have like a crane camera and they have, you know, that back then it was one camera <laughs> from all these different angles. So it took longer to, you know. How long did it take to film that movie? How many, was it several weeks, several months? I think it was through the summer of 80. So, but I kind of came in in August. Yeah. So, and they, they shoot it, so they shot most of it at night in the school. Ah. Uh. Yeah, because obviously they couldn't do it during the day because of classes, but they they shot mostly at night. Did you ever work on movies that didn't have a permit, so they're basically doing some rogue filming? So I, I've had interviewed direct, actors that were on movies like that where, all right, here, here are the cops. And yeah. they, they'd hurry up, end the scene, and then take off. Yeah, I actually, I've heard of that. I know people that have done that. Um, yeah. I have not done that. That's good. Weirdly. Um, yet <laughs> it's always the first <laughs> i'm okay with that i can shoot out my lines and run if i have to <laughs> i can't remember what's the movie with uh john favreau uh it was one of his first movies i can't remember the name of it but it's like where swingers? he and, was it swingers yes there, yeah. there's a scene in there you can see on the side of the, you hear the cops come and they said and you see them take off and i was listening to an interview with vince vaughn he said that was the scene where we were just finishing the scene. We heard the cops were like, let's get the hell out of here before they catch us because they didn't have a yeah. permit for a lot of those scenes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, there was a lot of, uh, um, like, back in the 90s, and it, that became very popular to do that. Yeah, yeah. So, rogue filming because it's like, by the time you do all the paperwork, you get all that stuff done, you know, and you pay a little fine or a little, you know, thing to the unions. I mean, it just, it's so much, it's a, such a hassle, right? Yeah, well, so, Canada became a hotspot for films, and they you you call it Canada exploitation in the yes. 
early 80s. What was the reason for that? There was something about a tax shelter. It was a tax shelter, yeah. So a lot of the big Hollywood movies were coming up uh, to film here because they got great tax credits, uh, tax cuts. You know, and the crews were known as being one of the best, and they still are known as being one of the best up here in Canada. Yeah. So um, they, they, you know, they had, as long as they had their two stars, their two Hollywood stars quota, they had to fill all the way other parts with Canadian actors. So we all got some good work back there, you know, and, mm -hmm. and that's when they were starting to do the horror movies and, and the comedies. And so they uh, shot a lot of like, I don't know if they shot Animal House here, but I think, you know, Porky's and Meatballs and all those slapstick kind of summer camp camp uh, comedy stuff and then the horror films so yeah. um so that was mostly what was getting done up here yeah. well yeah. In, in curtains which was that your next move or was it curtains yeah. next or was it deadly okay curtains was next yeah you uh the guy from animal house was, was in the movie john vernon yep john vernon yep. yes yep yeah oh i have a bedroom scene with him <laughs> oh i know that scene i was, I was gonna talk about that <laughs> you want you wanted that role really badly i really did i guess i got gall he i was gullible and he he was he seduced me but you know whatever <laughs> of all yeah, the people just, that would do that wouldn't would my character right <laughs> <laughs> that was that was another fun movie yeah. and unfortunately as you between that happy birthday to me, you definitely have a habit of losing your head. <laughs> I know. I know. I was wondering, about, was I like Lady Jane Grey in a previous life? Because I mean, <laughs> back here, you know. Um, yeah, I did. So weirdly, that's weird. It kind of makes me nervous because that that's, you know, one of the things I'm terrified of, you know. Oh, really? Like, I remember when I first saw Anne of a Thousand Days about yep. Anne Boleyn with John V. M. Jold and um, Richard Burton that came mm -hmm. out back in the 60s. And I remember seeing it, and I remember at the end when she gets, you know, her head chopped off. I was like, oh, I was just like so mortified, <laughs> scared. I mean, it it felt real, and you know, so um, um, yeah. I mean, who? That seems to be the way I, I died in these movies. That's fun. And my head gets in a toilet, so there we go. Yes, I've been humiliated enough. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and take a bow. Yeah. <laughs> And scene. Yeah, exactly. And scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that was so that's funny though. That was such a fear of yours. And then in several of the movies, yeah. without them even knowing, that's how they end up killing you. Exactly. I know. It's weird. It's scary. Well, and let's we talked about happy birthday to me with not mm -hmm. really knowing what the ending was. You mentioned in several interviews when I was doing my research that there were several endings um filmed for the cur for curtains. Why was that? Uh, you know, so one of them I don't remember being a part of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm not, I wasn't taking drugs back then. You know, I wasn't, I had started <laughs> like my say drug back phase then. Again. Now I hadn't yes, started my drug, I hadn't started my drug phase back then, but, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, I just, I don't remember the stage scene. I don't remember it. I don't remember me, but it's, you know, I just don't remember her doing the stand up on stage. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there was a lot about that movie that just was bizarre. Um, it, the, the producer ended up, you know, not liking what was happening in the beginning of the movie because Richard Chupka was very uh, creative and he was a cinematographer. He wanted to have a giallo type feel to the movie, right? Like how Dario Argentro kind of thing. Yes. And that's what he was going for. And Peter was like, no, no, I prom night did so well. We want to get there, get them out there and slash them up and, you know, get them. It's a horror movie. We want blood and guts and everything. And he was trying to, you know, they had two different ideas of, I think, how they wanted this movie to be. And so, um, you know, one says he left and the other one says he fired. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. You know, I just remember turning to Lynn one day when, when we were sort of sitting in the lobby waiting to do the scene. I was like, don't, don't worry about this. Nobody's ever going to see this movie. So, like, let's just take the money and run, right? Like, who cares? <laughs> And then years later, you know, people call in and go, are you the girl in the ice rink with the, the <laughs> what? <laughs> you saw that? So, uh, you know, so yeah, but it's it's great. I love when the fans want to talk about that stuff. It's it's wonderful. Well, I mean, that was a great segue because I want to talk about that. The fans did love the movie. And is, yeah. there was a petition that was, they got the attention of Synapse Films. Yes. It was to uh, brighten up and redo the curtains. And they did. 
Yeah. If they didn't, they, they thought there was more footage that they had, and then they found that they gotten rid of it, which is unfortunate. But they, what they did with it is, is a, a thing of beauty. So, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I loved it. I saw it years ago, and then I just rewatched it again for this interview. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a, like you said, I love the Jello aspect of it. I love, yeah. I love blood and guts. I think that's fun. But I also yeah. like a movie that has to, suspenseful, has a story, and it's making me wonder, like, what the hell is going to happen next? Like, I never yeah. expected that ending. And then, right until the very end, I'm like, no. Nah. And then when it ended up being her, I said, wow, I never saw that coming. Yeah, yeah, I said, that's good, it, yeah. It was making it so obvious, I thought it was going to be the woman. You yeah, know, Samantha. Who, I left yeah. in the mental hospital by Vernon, John Vernon. So yeah. I, thought was, but I said, there's no way they're going to make it that easy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But is it true that they didn't really just like happy birthday to me? They weren't sure what the ending was going to be. That's why they filmed several endings. Is that what you think? Yeah. 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 I mean, I think they, they were clear on who the, who the murderer was, but they weren't sure how they wanted to end it. Yeah. And I, since ha happy birthday to me had that successful ending with all the bodies, you know, around, yeah. they, they kind of imitated that. Yeah. But then it ended up going with the ending where she's doing that spiel in the mental asylum to the inmates. Yeah. yeah. Now, as I mentioned before, I, I spoke about two or three great directors. Another director that you worked with was Robert Klaus in uh, yes. Deadly Eyes. Yes, yes. And for people who don't know, um, he was great with the, the Asian um, Kung Fu movies like Enter the oh, Dragon, I didn't know. Of Death, Jackie <laughs> Chan's Big Brawl. Were you familiar with that? When no, I was, I was like, why are we watching, why are we go to a movie to see like, karate years later? Because he directed those movies. What? He directed. Bruce Lee. I was like, I didn't, I, Daley Thompson, I didn't know who he was. I know. I didn't know, it, it, I didn't do my research. I just thought, oh, he's a British act director and he's, you know, done a lot of, I knew he'd done a lot of stuff, but I didn't look it up, which was probably a good thing. Yeah. And the same with Ro Robert Klaus. I was like, oh my God, really? Like, I just, I was clueless. I didn't know who anybody was. Yeah. And like you I know, said, it was probably a good thing. <laughs> I interviewed uh, this musician from Jamaica and he was at a, there's a reason I'm bringing this up. He was at a, record store and he saw this guy playing guitar and he kept on going up to him every every day saying oh he teach me how to play guitar this and that the guy ended up being jerry garcia and that's just one wow. another, another one but he said he was i'm so glad i was so young i didn't know who these people were because i probably would have been starstruck he goes it was just this old guy that was teaching me guitar and he was so friendly to me and wow. he did that with another so it's sort of like similar to you it's like you didn't yeah. realize until, but for me i would be mad because I am such a huge Bruce Lee fan. I would be asking yeah. questions all day and all night. I know. Yeah. I mean, I just didn't, you know, didn't, I, I wasn't uh, karate, you know, didn't really watch martial arts movies at all. Still yeah. don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch them as much. But, but I have a lot of respect for it. I have a lot of respect for the art form and I have a lot of respect for, for that genre. So yeah. Um, and I, I guess I watch that kind of stuff through Quentin's movies because he brings a lot of that stuff into his movies, right? So right. Um, that's how I get my martial arts fix, I guess. <laughs> well, Kill Bill, right, right there. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, that was classic. Yeah. So yeah. What's, sure. It's funny because, as I mentioned, growing up, I watched all these low budget horror movies. My father introduced me to all these different things. So when I'm watching Quentin's movies, I'm like, wait a minute, I know this movie. I know that movie. Like an example would be in Kill Bill. They're like, hi, my name is Buck and I'm roaring the fuck. And that came from a movie called Crocodile directed by Toby Hooper. It was actually said by Robert Englund. I said, nice. wait a minute, I know that line. So yeah, yeah. Oh, in. he's taken all of that, all of yeah. the stuff from those films. Yeah, and he says he has. Oh yeah, he, he yeah. definitely. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he mentions all the time, like how he borrows from this and borrows from that. Yeah. Like and, Mr. Uh, Pink, Mr. White, that's all from Pen uh, Pe uh, taking Pelham one, two, three. Isn't that mm -hmm. the, the taking of Pelham one, two, three? Yes. Aren't they colored names in that? Those guys that robbed that train, aren't they the Mr. Yeah. Pink or Mr. Orange or? Yeah. Whatever? And uh, Reservoir yeah. Dogs. Yeah. Because from yeah. what I heard, that was a, it was basically one scene from some French movie, which I didn't see that movie, but mm. it was, they took that, it was a gangster title. movie. Um, so, so he he was because he worked in a, a video store. Yeah, uh, he watched everything. So yeah. the big movie back in seventy seven or seventy eight was Les Les Enfants uh, Les Enfants uh, Reservoir Les Enfants something like that. I had Reservoir in it right Res something French, and yeah. he thought Reservoir Dog that like he took that or that title from that movie. Au revoir or au revoir Les Enfants. 
something like that. I don't know. And it, he just, yeah, yeah. Um, and so um, he took that reservoir title and put it on in his movie. I was there when he, I was there at the, the film festival when he came to TIFF with oh, the wow. cast and everything and watched it. I was like, God, smacked. I was like, oh yeah, we really need this now. We really do. After that was we need 92, this. right? Yeah, nine, 92. Yeah. 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 What's your favorite of his movies? Reservoir Dogs. It is. Wow. Yeah. I'd have I to like say- the raw in your face quality of it. Yeah. It has I, some I, of the best lines. No, but definitely. I, I agree with that. I, it's Steve yeah. Buscemi is always hilarious. Oh God, yeah. 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 It's, and, and the whole, the whole cast is great. Like I can't remember the 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 main character, the older guy. Is he plays Lawrence the, Tierney? Yes, Lawrence Tierney. Yeah, he's Lawrence Tierney. I remember meeting him on the street in New York with a friend, and he he was like, I don't know who he was. He came up he came up to us and he said, "Do you know who I am?" And I was like, uh, "No." And he said, "I was Dillinger. <sighs> I played the Dillinger." And I was like, "Oh wow, that's fantastic!" Why I'm Lawrence Tierney? I mean, he just sort of talked to us, telling us who he was, and I was like. Okay, good, good. And then he shows up in this movie, and I'm like, that's that guy we met. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. He just came up to you out of the blue. On the out of the blue. He saw that's us on hilarious. the street. We were dressed up because we were going to dinner. And he just came, in, came over to us and he told us who he was. And I was like, wow, wow that's fantastic. Amazing. You were John Dillinger. Jeez. <laughs> See, unfortunately, <laughs> I wish things like that would happen to me. Unfortunately, it's usually people who say that to me are homeless drug addicts. Well, hey, I was Dillinger. Sure you were. <laughs> I usually get that too. <laughs> I want guy to watch me at a mall and say, you know what? I want you to shut down the, the food court. My father owns this building. It was Commerce Court, right? My father owns this building and I want you to shut down the restaurant. And I said, why? And I was just kind of like trying to reason with him. Like, why do you want to shut down the restaurant? Because I don't like looking at people being happy. Oh, wait, <laughs> you think these people are happy? Oh, hell no. They have fancy clothes on. They're not happy. <laughs> and I got a crack of a smile out of it and they just walked away. I was like, <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you just have these random conversations. I know, people. weird. <laughs> so weird. Well, um the, the movie that uh Robert Klaus directed was uh, Deadly Eyes. Yes. And yeah. I I tried to watch that the other night. It was on YouTube. For some reason the audio wouldn't sync with the video, so I couldn't watch oh, all of it. But that's I annoying. do know I, I did see your scene when you walk in there's like the bruce lee movie on and then yes you, yeah so, and then everybody comes running out yeah yeah the, i want to talk about this because i i love this story it's about rats mm-hmm. what were what were the rats actually dashes yes <laughs> the moving ones were dashes in in rat suits <laughs> and to this day i don't like dashing dogs i don't i really don't i'm like Perfect choice because they do look kind of like rats in real life, but they they had them in these. They trained them in L.A. and they they would put down some meat. They would smell the meat, kind of you know move towards where that meat was, and they all kind of moved together. Um, and then they had the of course mechanical ones that actually you know bit into the characters. Uh, but yeah, dogs, dogs, and <laughs> dogs in rat suits. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah. Like I said, I couldn't see the whole thing. Did you have any scenes with Scatman Crothers? No, I didn't. But I feel like I was on the set when he was doing his tunnel scene. I feel like I was there because I think I it was filming close to where I lived. And I think I walked up and just kind of was there. Uh, but I would love to have met him. He's uh, Scatman. I mean, I would love to have met him. You know, it's funny because growing up in the 70s, one of my favorite cartoons was Hong Kong Fooey. <laughs> I yes. did not know until recently, probably about four years ago, that that was him. And I, yeah. so now I can't, the voice is so familiar, but back then I didn't know who Scatman Crawlers was. Well, you're a kid, uh, right? <laughs> yeah. And I didn't watch it. You know, I, my first movie of remembering of him was The Shining. That's when yes. I said, oh, this guy's great. And then, you know, after that, I saw him in other movies. But when yeah. I, my brother bought the DVD and I watched it, wait a minute. And then said yeah. that, I said, that's Scatman Crawlers. I love yeah, that yeah. cartoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. He's now, great. was that a was that a theatrical release or was that a made for TV movie? That was a that was a feature. It was. Um, yep. Uh, it was the only film shooting that year in Canada, all across Canada. Only film was Rats, wow. Deadly Eyes, and that's what propelled Lisa to leave. <laughs> she was like, "Oh, this is what's happening here. I'm going to L.A." So, 
Um, so she left shortly after that movie was finished. Did you ever think of moving to Hollywood? I'd been to Hollywood and I didn't really like it. I was more a New York person. Yeah. That's where I moved. I moved to New York. Yeah. And, um, you know, I love New York. I'm not, I, I've grown to like LA now. I love Santa Monica. It's my favorite place out there. So um, I wouldn't be opposed to living out there. But at the time, again, it was in the 80s and you had to really be the. The idea of like how you had to look to be in movies was just so crazy. I was just joking, say they'd have to do so much work on me to get me the way they want that I wouldn't make any money because I'd be paying them back for, you know. And then I then you know when the Me Too movement happened, I realized, oh, it's a good thing I didn't move to LA. I said I probably wouldn't have made it anyway because I wouldn't have put up with that crap. You yeah. know what I mean? So, um, yeah. you know, so it's, there was a reason I didn't I didn't do well or I wouldn't have done well at all. Because yeah. if that's what was going on, I wouldn't have, you know, I'd have said, I'm coming home. <laughs> Forget it. Yeah, I don't blame you. Yeah. I don't blame you. Yeah. I read this. I want, I want to see if it's true or not. Uh, you almost had a chance to work with Milos Foreman. Yes, I auditioned for Amadeus. Yes. I did. I had a screen test and I uh, went to, uh, uh, I was told to go see the play. I went to see the play. Then I met with Milos Foreman. And in his office, and of course, like you got to understand, I loved Milos Forman. I was like so obsessed with him because I saw Hair about nineteen times in the movie theater, mm -hmm. and he had done Hair, and um, and and he, you know, he'd done all these really great movies, and I, and the shot, and and um, the one flew over the cuckoo's nest, right? That yes. Was him. Love so that yeah, so I felt like okay. Hey, this could be the big chance. And uh, so I, I met him and then I went and worked with him in his home. He had other people come in and he worked with them and then he did the scene with me. And then the next day was the screen test. And I went into the screen test in costume and everything, wig and everything. And I come out after my screen test and there's Tom Hulse, right? Going, that was really good. That was really and I'm like, yes, yes. Yes, you, you are days like this. Because I had met him in, during uh, Daria Van Frank through Thomas G. Waits, right? They He was doing the Seagull with Kathleen Turner right before our play opened. Ah. I got to meet Kathleen Turner and Thomas Hulse through Tom Waits. Mm -hmm. And so um, so he had remembered me from that. And he was like, that was really, you know, came out and sort of we had a little, thing, a little talk. And then I was just like, yes, yes, yes. There's nobody else. Nobody else. You. You're Amadeus. But unfortunately, they went with um. Uh, what's her name? I can't remember her name. She, she was Meg good. Tilly. Yes. Well, they went with Meg Tilly, and then they started shooting with her, and she broke her leg or something happened. And oh. They had to. They had to like get somebody really fast. And um, I didn't have my SAG card. I didn't have a permit, you know, or a visa. And I, I mean, who knows if they would have? They probably asked her anyway because. She was probably next on the list, but you know, I felt like I was on that list somewhere. I'm just not yeah. sure where. Yeah. Was there any movie that you turned down that you regret? I haven't been in the position to turn anything down. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was. <laughs> uh, you know, I guess the only thing that I, I can say that I might have regretted is the is the musical, yeah. Girls in the Gang. You know. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of regret not doing that. Yeah. No, uh, no, that but, was. No, but you know what? Though? There's, there's, you still have plenty of time to do. Because we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Post parts and you know, hey, Larry, is are you, are you home? It's your wife. Oh, he's not here. <laughs> see, <laughs> you sold me on it. <laughs> uh. Yeah. What what other high profile movies besides Amadeus that you would that you uh, auditioned for and didn't get that we would know? Uh, the Sure Thing. I met Rob Reiner. Ah, for that. Um, he seems like another great guy too. Oh yeah, he was really really nice guy. Um, I uh, love Spinal Tap. Oh god, yeah, just hilarious. One of my favorite movies. Um, Baby, it's you, Roseanne Arquette. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a few, there was a few, but I, I didn't know how close I was, uh, to getting them anyway. So, I mean, I tried out for the Daphne Zuniga part in the short thing. So, yeah. um, but, but, you know, back then you got to meet the directors right away. 
like there was none of this self-taping because obviously the pandemic has made that happen now but um there's none of this self-taping stuff going on it was like uh, you went in and met casting people and the director and sometimes the producer because mm -hmm. that way you get to know like you're in the same room and they get to see, get your vibe you get their vibe and you get to know whether you're going to have a good working relationship yeah and then they would test you and stuff after that so um you know kind of cut out all the bs but now it's anyone can self-tape and save yeah. it in you know so yeah. that's the frustrating part about that but well, I've talked to actors who said, you know, over where they lived or the, you know, the, the big fish in the small pond, and they either go to New York or LA and there's a yep. thousand people that look like them, talk like them, sing like them. Exactly. And they realize like, oh shit. <laughs> so I should have just... stayed where I was. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I kind of had that sort of feeling when I was, when I moved to New York, but, um, but I don't regret moving to New York because I had so many other amazing experiences living there. And met so many other really great people so yeah um but you know who knows what would have happened you know? yeah. yeah you worked with so many great people i want to go through some of the things that you worked on one it was check it out with don adams you played his niece his <laughs> yes, niece Denise, Denise. Denise. <laughs> <laughs> yes i did yeah that was fun um you know it, he had a bit of an attitude um in the beginning but i just sort of like came out at one point and just was like like man you know like let's not get too you know personal here and you know heated and and he, and he sort of warmed up to me later so that was okay but it was hard to kind of crack it in, in the beginning was it more because he felt he was a big star and yeah. everybody else? oh okay there was a lot of that right yeah. Yeah, yeah there was a lot of that ego it was a lot of ego stuff yeah but you know he was other than that he was hilarious and he was you know yeah. it was it was cool yeah. yeah i mean i love the shows like tennessee tuxedo maxwell smart I mean, he's did, done yeah, so many yeah. great things he has yeah he, you know yeah he has so i guess you know he's earned it i guess <laughs> no i mean i still think that you know what's funny because um i want to ask you about this because i do you go to a lot of the movie conventions? Because I go to, like as I mentioned, Chiller. I used to go to Fangoria. I've been to Rock and Shack. These are all the Northeast conventions. So I'm yeah. sure you do more of the Canadian ones. Yeah, yeah. I I would like to go to more. I don't go to, to enough. I don't I don't know if the younger people uh, who run them know. They may not know those kind of those movies, and I'm not in the big ones like Friday the Thirteenth or Halloween franchise or you know the, with the one with Robert England. Nightmare 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 Street. Street, yeah. yeah. I mean, the lesser known ones. And so they may not pay attention to that. So it's, I go to um, Horrorama. I just went to that in the fall, which is run by Chris Alexander. Hmm. Uh, I've been to the Fangoria one in New York. Um, yeah. There's another one in New Jersey I've been to. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'd love to go to more of them. Well, you know, what? I'm going to I'm going to talk. I know the promoter or the he's the one that books the guests for the one in Connecticut. It's called Connecticut Cult Classics. I'm okay. going to get in touch. His name is uh, Larry Dwyer. I'm going to get in touch with him because uh, okay. I was talking to uh, David Harris, who played Cochise in the Warriors, and he mm -hmm. wants me to do the same thing, too. But I you yeah. would be a, people would love it. Like just like you're surprised sometimes like curtains. Really? You saw that? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people would love to get a picture with you and you would. Sure. Be, so I'm going to I'm going to talk to him. See yeah. if I can set that up for you. That but, would be great. Yeah. That would be fantastic. The reason I bring that up is because I go to conventions and this is what I thought found funny. The people that the more established stars, the ones that made it, the ones that really have nothing to prove. One example is Martin Landau. Another one was George Hamilton. Yeah. They were the nicest people, most down earth. Yeah. The people that were sort of on the way up and they're in the, they're still, their career is still going, or maybe they're not as popular as they were. Like Linda Hamilton was one. Yeah. They were the biggest jerks I ever met. So it's funny. Yeah. Like it's like the people that don't have anything to prove, are the nicest people the, the ones yeah. this is my experience with them the yeah. people that are trying to like either like they're mad because their career is not as big as it was and they're maybe doing these yeah. conventions and so when, yeah. when you're talking about don adams i think that was maybe because maybe that was sort of the because it was what 85 86 that tv series came out yeah it was 86 i think i did that yeah yeah so maybe yeah. like at that time he just was wasn't yeah. happy with spirits with. i thought i mean yeah. i didn't see the whole series i saw bits and pieces of it but from what i saw it was funny i, I oh, think it was I, very funny yeah, yeah it was very funny and uh and um same with the boogie's diner which i did too and uh uh that was kind of cool and funny and that james marston was before he became big James Marston that he is now. He was in yeah. that show. And so, um, uh, but um, 
yeah, it was a it was a good show, and I and and he was fine. Like it just was sort of like the first few like first day or so that oh, okay, you know you get you get it right. Like I've worked with big famous people, and and uh, you know I I haven't really seen many egos, luckily, yeah. thankfully. You well, know, example is Art Carney. You mentioned what a great guy yeah. he is. That guy's a legend. Totally down earth, John Vernon. Totally down earth. You know what I mean? Like just no, they're not kept up on who they are, right? You want to know it's funny. Speaking of Art Carney, I. I met Tony Orlando and Dawn uh-huh. and uh, they worked with Jackie Gleason. I know other people work with Jackie yeah. Gleason and they, Hey, I have never heard a good story about this guy. Unfortunately. Really? I've heard Jackie nothing Gleason? Yeah, yeah. They just said he was so full of himself, always drunk, yeah. just com- very, very mean. Yeah. And it's just, unfortunately, so like, that's uh, the reason I bring him up is because he and Art Carney worked together, obviously. Yes. And I was wondering yeah. like if the experience he had with him, because he worked with him for so long, but. Uh, he, he would, he never said anything. Yeah, about yeah. Jackie Gleason, um, he, that's just not who he is. It's not yeah. you know, he wouldn't like talk out of turn about that. It's yeah, you know what I, well, I don't know what his feelings were about him. But I went to a, I went to theater school with a cousin of Jason Patrick, mm-hmm. who is Jackie Gleason was his grandfather, right? Yeah. So because um, the guy was in The Exorcist that played Father Karras, yes, it was an amazing amazing playwright. Um, he wrote that championship season. He was married to Jackie Gleason's daughter, and Jason Patrick was their son. See, I did not know that. I knew yeah. who his father. I knew who Jason Patrick's father was. I knew his father Karis, but I didn't realize that. Yeah, um, yeah. his Jackie grandfather. Gleason yeah, wow. very. Cool. So, and Matt Nutri, who's cousins with Jason Patrick, I went to theater school with him. So, that's a little trivia. Can we can we add this to the podcast list? <laughs> Well, think Jason Patrick will do the show? Come on. <laughs> hey, you never know. You never know. I'll, I'll be booked Lost for 2029. Boys. Lost Boys. Yeah. Oh, I would Keep love that one. Yeah. <laughs> Are you still in contact with all these people? Uh, no. Yeah. I mean, if not, if through Facebook, I guess, but not, yeah. not really, no. Um, uh, Kiefer Sutherland, uh, I had brunch with before he got cast in the Bay Boy. I didn't know who he was. I was yeah. like, okay. And then I suddenly went, oh, oh, Kiefer. Oh, oh, I did a whole Edith Bunker. Oh, like in my head at the at the dining table. <laughs> you know, and I, I I learned quickly right then and there not to mention his last name when I introduced ah. him to other people. So this is Kiefer. This is Isabel. This is Leslie. I'm Leslie. <laughs> But what, why didn't he like his last name mentioned? Was it something to do with this? Well, no, I just didn't want to do that. I didn't want to. I, oh. I made I he didn't tell me to. He didn't say, oh, okay. don't, you know, I just made the conscious decision being an actor and having, you know, not that that's happened. I've had people, you know, I'm not famous, but his father was saying, I just didn't want to like open yeah. up that that sort of line of questioning for him because I didn't know how comfortable he was with that. You know, <laughs> you could have been worse. Could have been like, oh, it's so nice to meet Donald's son. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Donald's son, yeah. Exactly. No, he was a uh, he. Yeah, Donald's son. Yeah, that's my last name. Um, he. I know. He, I, I realized yeah, yeah. after I said that, I'm like, oh, <laughs> she's probably thinking I'm talking about her. But I meant like. <laughs> no, no, I know what you meant. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, I just yeah, it's it's because then I looked at him. And I went, of course he is. He looks exactly like his dad. What the hell is wrong with you, Leslie? <laughs> nice guy. Really nice guy. It was funny. It was one time I was showing uh, Invasion and Buy Snatchers to one of my friends, my friend's younger brother, and he goes what's Kiefer doing with a mustache? And I was laughing so hard. I said, that's his father, Donald. He had no idea who Donald was. Really, yeah. He thought it was Kiefer. He goes, Kiefer looks weird in this movie. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, First of all, he was a little guy when he made that. Like, he was, you know, in his teens or tweenies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Another TV show that you did, I saw bits and pieces of, and it looked funny, too, was Adderley. Oh, yeah, yeah. With Winston Record. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, Bruce Pittman who directed that. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, because they goofed around on set. Bruce likes to have a very playful set. You know, he doesn't want it to be heavy and intense. And it never is with him because he's a great director. And he's, you know, always keeps it light. So they would always do these little skits after we shot something. Mm-hmm. And so I got it got into that. But yeah, it was kind of a funny tongue-in-cheek show. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, was an- another TV. Was that a TV series in Canada? Yeah. 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 So, um, uh, yeah, I did that. It was fun. The crazy hairdo. <laughs> 80s, too. 
<laughs> Love the eighties too. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> how, how long did that TV show last? A couple of seasons, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, a couple go. of years. Had a good couple of years for that. Yeah. yeah. It seems like I was just on one episode. Oh, really? That was yeah. okay. Yeah. 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 Like um, I said, I, I saw the best of Leslie Donaldson, uh, the real. So I wasn't oh, sure geez. how long you were on that show, but that no, was just one just one episode. Yeah. Yeah. But you and I have something in common because I do another show. It's called Nutmeg Junction, where it's it's based on the old uh, radio serials before mm. TV was out. So I do a lot of voice acting, and I know oh, nice. you did okay. you did some too. You did uh, Star Wars droids. I think another yes. one, was Star Wars Ewoks. Yes. I, I, again, here's one of those things. Uh, I have, I, I guess I was in Ewoks. I'm not really sure. I don't remember. <laughs> it might have been as a back, back, background, background, background voice. <laughs> <laughs> hey. But I do remember doing droids. Yes. Um, yeah. That was with Anthony Sum Summer, Sumner, the one that played C3PO. He was oh, there. Anthony Daniels. Anthony, is it Anthony Daniels? Yeah. Okay. I don't know why I keep calling it Summer. It sounds like, um, yeah, now you're making Anthony me Daniels. think it, but it's Anthony Daniels, yeah. You're Anthony Daniels. He was there, and um, Long John Baldry did uh, some voice work on that. And so, yeah, it was a lot of fun to do that. And I had stepped in because somebody, they already re-recorded re it with another actress. But uh, I think they didn't like the tone of her voice. I'm not sure. Because she had a voice, like, kind of up high. Like, she had a little high voice like this. Like, it was very unique to her. And, was, and it served her well in her career. But I guess they just didn't want it for that character. The producers decided they didn't want it for that particular character. And how'd they find you? So I just went in and auditioned. And they said, oh. sure. Yeah. So, yeah, it's good. And yeah. what, what was that? Was that a TV series at one time? Or was it just? It was, like, it was on, the, like, Saturday morning. Okay. You know, cartoons, you know, it was the adventures of C-3PO and R2-D2. You know what? It's funny. Was this, in the, was this in the big Star Wars phase, like set late 70s, early 80s? It was in the, like, I think I did it in 84. Okay. 84, yeah. 85. I think yeah, I yeah. do remember it now. I, like it, it, Return of the Jedi and all that was. Yeah, that was 83. Yeah. 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 83, so it's yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or the um, Empire Strikes Back or one yeah. of those was coming out. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Now, were you, were you a big Star Wars fan back then? Oh God, I loved the original Star Wars. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. yeah. I remember getting excited to go see Star Wars, but I saw it at my cottage, the theater up there. And I used to sit and stargaze every night when I was at the cottage. You know, I loved it. It's one of my you know fa favorite things to do. So what's your favorite out of those three? The first one. Yeah. So I like I like Empire. And the last one I think was good too. Really? Yeah. So Empire is my favorite because I th I'm, Empire, I'm more of a, yeah. uh, it's funny because I'm I'm not a depressing person I'm usually like upbeat positive yeah. but I love how down Empire is yeah it went to the dark yeah and I, sure. I just look <laughs> yeah it's just it was it was good it's like it's yeah. more to me it was more realistic and even though it's not really you know it's a sci-fi yeah. movie fantasy but it was just a, I, for some reason when I saw it I said I love this and the, the characters yeah, yeah. characters were more developed and yeah. Even though yeah. I don't think they were fully developed because there's a scene where uh, uh, Princess Leia kisses uh, Luke and then he's like, gives her, gives Han the thumbs up. I don't think they realize they're going to be brother and sister at that no, time. No, I guess they didn't then. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe it wasn't fully developed yet, but. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, and I had this conversation with somebody because I don't like any of the new stuff really. And I don't really yeah. watch it. I think it's became oversaturated because back yeah. then it was every three years, it was more of an event. People couldn't yeah. wait for the next one to come out. What's going to happen next? Now it's like every six months they're coming out with a new movie, a new the TV yeah. series, cartoon, just. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. I didn't really get into the new ones like the Phantom Menace or whatever. I didn't really go there. No. Yeah. 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 That's the original with the original people when they were, you know, younger. Yeah. Now, the, the dev voice, the dev voice work lead to more voice work. Yeah, I used to do a lot of voice work in the 80s and 90s. Oh. A lot of commercial stuff like on the radio or on television and that um, can't get arrested over there now. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really tight knit community though. You know, like yeah. once you're in it, you're pretty set for, you know, for, for having a voice career and it's lucrative. Yeah. Well, uh, like years ago I was in radio and somebody hmm. told me it was, he was the assistant program director and he said that he makes more money doing one commercial. This was in 1995. 
more money doing one commercial than they did the whole week of pay at the radio station. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They pay really well. Yeah. And then it, you get residuals every time it runs. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they do that now. I think they buy it out. So uh, yeah. they don't really do residuals anymore. Yeah. That's a shame. Which is a shame. Yeah. But um, yeah, because every time you see your commercial, cha-ching, cha-ching. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever get those five cent checks like all yep. right <laughs> <laughs> oh happy birthday to me aired somewhere here's three cents <laughs> what uh, what happens like I'm, I'm curious about this maybe you would know like when a movie plays at a drive-in like how do yeah. they figure out like is it just like for box office results or anything like because i guess do they just take in you say it's somebody say it's the opening movie and somebody's paying for the other movie they just Put that towards the box office of like, oh yeah, well this may this the, the happy birthday to me made so. this much money and I think so. I'm I'm you're I'm curious about that, just as you are. I I, I don't know how they yeah. tally that up. I know it's obviously how many tickets they sell, yeah, in, in each theater that's playing in, yeah. Um, but I guess they, yeah, I don't know how they tally up a drive-in thing. I love the drive -ins. There's actually yeah. one drive-in in Connecticut still, and I go to it every summer all the time. And the, I loved the drive-ins in the 60s and 70s because that's when yeah. they show the movies that normally wouldn't be shown in the indoor theater. Yes. Would and be I think there. it's funny is, where did you originally see Funeral Home? I think I saw it in a drive-in. Yeah, because you said you didn't want to, yeah. you didn't really want to see in the theater. No, no, I had, people. An I had an experience with my mother in the theater when I was, Watching when a stranger calls. Ah, love that they movie. Started, yeah, they started showing the previews, and down come Michael Douglas's legs down the stairs, and they they're advertising that running's coming. Right, running's going to be in the theaters whenever it was. And my mother goes, "Oh, that's it! Look, it's you!" <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, "Oh, Jesus!" You know, sliding down the seat and everybody's turning around to look at me. And I'm like, I don't even think I was on the screen. You know, I was just running. Right. So I thought, OK, that's it. I'm never. No, we're not going to the theater to see funeral. Home. Not if you're going to act like that. <laughs> well, well, now you'd probably be at the end of the movie. They'd probably be out there signing autographs. <laughs> like, yeah, they're going <laughs> <through> my legs. <laughs> Are you hiring? Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm available. <laughs> Yeah, well, nobody's asked me to do that, but I would. <laughs> I have no shame. <laughs> Another TV show that I did enjoy, and I only saw bits and pieces of it, is where you play a blind girl in The Littlest Hobo. Oh, The Littlest Hobo, yeah. Had gone and ride a horse. I was like the, I, I, I was all the disabled athletes back then. <laughs> yes. Do you know what I mean? And I'm not an athlete. And I remember when I got that audition, I went and I was auditioning for it, and the casting agent came out and she went around the room. She said, okay, now I'm going to ask you this. Don't lie to me because if I get you on set and you said you ride a horse and you don't know what you're doing, that's it. Okay. So they go around the room. Everybody's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yep, 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 uh huh, yep, yep. No. Me, no. <laughs> Back, yes, 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 yes. I get it. I'm like, you heard me say no out there, right? <laughs> and I have to be blind on top of it. Oh, good. Wonderful. <laughs> So wait, so it how, that's do. funny. Did they do that because she knew everybody else was lying for the most part? And then I guess they just thought, well, the, she's telling the truth. And I knew the director because the director was the first AD on running. Okay. So he knew me from then. And then I guess they just felt that, well, let's just give her some lessons, get her on a horse, give her some lessons. And we know we know what we're dealing with here. <laughs> we don't know what we're dealing with out there. <laughs> no. So I guess that's the call they made. Yeah. What's funny, made. it's very similar to like Lassie meets Rin Tin Tin. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. They had like three different dogs that each could do different things. Ah. Had a specialty in different things that was going to be required of the dog. And then here's one I didn't get a chance to check out. And I want to see it. It's, uh, it's on my list of things to watch is uh, starred Richard Crenna, Stone Cold oh, Dead. Stone Cold Dead. Yes, I was the pregnant prostitute that gets um, cross-examined or questioned by Richard Crenna, who was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I witnessed some kind of crime in the in the hotel, and then he takes me into the room and interrogates me. All yeah. right. So I, I already have that saved to my uh, wish list, so I'm going to be watching that. There's a lot of really cool people in that. There's Richard Crenna. There's uh, Paul Williams, um, Jennifer 
Dale, Chuck Shimada, a whole bunch of other people that are pretty big names. Wow. Yeah. Let's yeah. See. No, here's one I did enjoy. Uh, Tales of Poe. That one I did. Oh, did see. you see that? I loved it. <laughs> you know, what? I like how um, when you when you were talking about funeral home, you said that it was sort of like R Little Red Riding Hood meets Psycho. Yes. So this yeah, one, yeah. I thought it was more like uh, if Edgar Allan, Edgar Allan Poe had a baby with one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Your story? Yes. It was like yes. a telltale tell heart, but uh, an with updated women. version of it. Yeah, yeah with, and with women. So except for the couple of guys in it. But uh, yeah, it's all the main characters are women rather than men. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that was fun to do. Yeah. Well, the, what was I going to say about that movie? Oh, I know what I was going to say. Because <laughs> as I mentioned, you have a habit of losing your head. In this yeah. movie, you only lost a tongue. <laughs> I did. I got it pulled out of my mouth. <laughs> it's always got to be something to do with the head here. <laughs> yeah, I know. Weird. This time, maybe the director was a little bit more compassionate, a little more. I guess. Like, you know what? Oh, let's only rip out her tongue. Let's yeah, I know. I guess he time. was looking for something unique and different that, you know, he could bring to the to the, the genre. Bart. <laughs> I yeah. love your character in that movie. Because you're just yeah. so, you're just egging her on, egging her on. Yeah. Come on, yeah. what a liar. You're yeah, full you of it. Not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was fun to do. And one movie I saw when it came out in the theaters, and I didn't know who you were at the time, but I saw that on your credits was, uh, I love this movie, A Simple Favor. What did you play oh, yeah. in that one? Oh, I was a glorified extra in that one. Okay. Um, so I was at the end um, on the bus when the two twins are on the bus, their young selves, they're younger when they're younger. Yep. And I get up to take a picture of one of the twins, and she slaps the camera out of my hands. Um, so I was just, a, I had dark hair in it and I was just, a, just an extra that takes a picture of one of the twins and gets berated for it. And then I go sulk and sit down again and that's it. That's it. But I, Paul Feig was right there. I got to be in the same bus with Paul Feig. So I think I'm saying his name right. Um, oh, sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I tried out for another part in that, but it went to somebody else. I don't know. But anyway. Did you ever have, did you have a chance to meet uh, Blake Lively or Anna Kendrick? No, Anna Kendrick was doing a scene, so I saw her in a car come by, yeah. but I never actually got to interact with him. Yeah. yeah, that was another movie where I said, "Where the hell is this going? How is this?" I, yeah, I me love too. That movie. Yeah, I read the script because they give you the script to read, even if you're a glorified extra, and so um, it was really well done. Yeah, yeah, but, really well done. So well, it's, it's I haven't nice, seen it, but yeah, it's, it's a nice. Uh, credit to your resume yeah exactly for sure yeah always trying to rack up those credits and um, i've been practicing my french for this next one actually before we do that speaking of french i want to talk about this because you talked about lying for the uh riding the horse yeah i, I tell this story to people because i heard it and i love it I'm, I'm sure you know the movie close encounters steven spielberg 1977 i love close encounters that's one of oh my, my that's probably yeah, my yeah. favorite spielberg movie. yeah I yeah. grew up, I loved that movie. Yeah. But Bob Balaban, who's a um, great, he played the French interpreter. Yeah. And what happened was he went in there and like, well, can you speak French? Oh, yeah. And he said that all he did was he learned a monologue he learned in high school French. And that's all he knew. Right. Gilbert loved them. They're like, all right, you're hired. And then, yeah. he, shit, what am I going to do now? So afterwards, Spielberg found out, he goes, you know, I encourage people to lie. He goes, just get your foot in the door. He goes, we'll worry about the rest later. He goes, I yeah, love yeah. the fact that Bob lied and got, he, goes, he never would have gotten a yeah. part if he didn't do that. If he didn't lie. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sometimes you have to, you know, just do a little bit of, you know, well, I can pull this off. Yeah, yeah, sure. I can do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So as I said, I was practicing my French for this next question because you worked in a movie named Homecoming, I think it yes. was called. And yeah, yeah. he, the director is responsible for finding one of my favorite movies of the 70s is Coma, starring Michael Douglas. Yeah. And was it jean Vieve Bujold? I was jean Vieve Bujold, yes. Jill's Carl. Jill's Carl discovered her. And I was talking about her earlier in Anne of a Thousand Days. She played Anne Boleyn in that movie, jean Vieve Bujold. Um, and yeah, he did. He did discover her and got her on her got her going uh and then i that was my first movie was with him wow and and augie schellenberg yeah that was a fun movie to do yeah um yeah i mean it was um 
So I, I was like the daughter that travels with him and his partner on the rodeo circuit. And he takes me home to his family on the reservation. And I'm supposed to be this fair haired, blonde kid of his. Uh, and I become smitten with the reservation and I don't want to leave. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you have to leave. You have to come back. You can't stay here. Look at you. You're like a canary in a flock of crows. That was the big line. That's why I did my hair the way it was. And I said, no, but I want to stay here and learn about my past, my culture. So it was a movie about that, coming of age and that kind of thing. Yeah. It was a good movie. Yeah. There's yeah. another movie. I'm, I'm trying to see the, find the name of it, but because you said you always play, you played a lot of characters with disabilities. There's yeah. one that you consider the CBC version of an ABC after school special where you had epilepsy. Yes, um, on my own. Yes, That's when it. I was a, I was a swimmer on the team, <laughs> and I had epilepsy. <laughs> so, yeah, so um, yeah, that was that was cool to me because I'd learned all about epilepsy that I didn't know things about, and. Um, um yeah yeah that was fun well did you ever see the movie tropic thunder with, i think uh, i did yes with with what's his face um robert Downey jr Anthony. ben stiller yeah. yeah but he yeah he has the reason i'm bringing this up was because i don't know if you remember this robert Downey jr is like he's telling uh ben stiller that you never go full retard you always have yeah. to use he goes look at sean penn he looks like one, acts like one, but you never. So I, yeah. you play, he goes, anybody with an affliction always wins an award. So you yeah. played so many characters with afflictions. One of these days, I'm going to yeah. see you up at the Oscars or the Golden <laughs> Globes saying, thank you. Yes. Wouldn't that be nice? That would yeah. be nice. I, I, what was encouraging at the Golden Globes was the young guy from Steven Spielberg's Temple of Doom, the little Asian kid that was in that. Oh, yeah. I now won an award. Him. Yeah, won an award for his acting in Everywhere, Everything, All at Once, that movie that I thought was a great movie. And and was, and he said, I never thought anything would ever happen to me again. You know, like I just thought that was it. You know, Goonies and that movie, that was it. And then he said, but look, here I am. They some, they, they found me and, you know, so you never know. I, I hold out hope. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was funny because I, I saw that and I said, wow, I did not realize that that was the same kid. I love that movie. Yeah. Oh, I had yeah. no idea. Because I've been a big Michelle Yeoh fan for years. I oh, love, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so when I, but that's a movie that I wanted to see in the theater. And I'm actually glad, probably the only movie I'm glad I didn't see in the theater. And I'll tell you why, yeah. because if you miss one second of that movie, you're so lost. You're lost. Yeah. yeah. You're lost. I went yeah. to the bathroom for a second. If, and so that's yeah. why I'm, that mostly I, when somebody goes, would you rather watch in the theater or in TV? I said, I'll, I'd rather see no. it in the theater. I love the theatrical yeah. experience. So, I'm, yeah. But that's one movie I'm so glad I'm like, pause and yeah exactly and see, yeah 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 and Jamie so Lee many Curtis things going on there is so many things going on yeah, yeah which is why it's such a huge success but yeah there's another one Jamie Lee Curtis was in that and that picture of her where she's like yes because when Michelle wins and that's how we all need to be with each other <laughs> well it's funny because I did not even know that was her I, I found mm -hmm. I was watching it and then I uh Sarah wanted to see it. So I put it on pause. I said, all right, I'll watch the rest of the world. And she goes, well, yeah, is this the movie with Jamie Lee Curtis? I said, what are you talking about? And I said, oh my God, that's her. She yeah, was so she's out great. of character. Yeah, she was yeah. great. Yeah, no, it's good. It was, it, she, she's a, you know, she's, I like that she's owning who she, you know, owning her stuff now. She's one of the inspirations that made me go great. Ah. You know, because I just went, oh, just, just go great. Just do it. You're almost 60. Just do it. Exactly. See, that's so what, you sometimes to people fool. say that to me, too. I said, you know what? I'm just glad I have hair. I don't really care. Yeah, exactly. Me, too. I have hair. So it doesn't matter what color it is. <laughs> so, We've yeah. also done a lot behind the scenes, too. I know that uh, during that 2015 interview that I, you were working on writing something with Eileen Dietz at the time, who was the extra in The Exorcist. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not not so much with her, but uh, uh, I started writing a, a, based on my life raising children in Upper West Side Manhattan okay. called Rubber Jungle. And I do have a writing partner, David Bickley, that we started writing about our experiences because we would tell people about what was going on on the playground during the day. And our friends who don't have kids would be like, no, it, no. I'll be like, yes, it happened. That happened. So we thought this could be a show. So we're, we started writing uh, about uh, these two stay at home parents. That are marriages are ending and they're, that they're questioning everything that they've decided to do in their lives they make the right choice and and they're raising their kids badly you know they're drinking in out of sippy cups and taking pills and they're just you know doing a lot of naughty behavior um 
so that I'm still trying to get somebody to uh, to, to be interested in it, um, develop it, and then Ma Barker. Uh, the the you know bloody did you ever see Bloody Mama with Shirley uh, Winters? Oh yeah, back in the seventies. Well, I want to do that. And, oh, really? Uh, yeah. So we we reimagined it. Uh, Maria Nieto, who is my other writing partner, and I reimagined it, and it still takes place in the thirties. But uh, it's we've turned them into cannibals uh, on top of flopping banks. So it's kind of um, in, inspired by a Quentin feel to it. You know, it's kind of like you get on the Ma Barker train and you ride it till the end. And that would it, be you know, great. Well, yes. Hello, anybody out there? <laughs> Somebody's got to be watching this show. Come on. Somebody that has money that wants to make a yeah. movie. Yeah, so, exactly. With cannibals. Uh, Come on. We got to move on from the zombies. Let's go to the cannibals now. <laughs> exactly. You have so many great ideas. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. I have more where that came from. So. I wonder what I'm thinking then, because when I was watching, did you, you, I think you made a movie with Eileen Dietz then, right? No, I, I became very friendly with her. Oh, okay. uh, we met, yeah, she was in Abnormal Attraction. I didn't do that's a scene it. with her, but she was in Abnormal Attraction. Yeah. Okay, that's what yeah. I'm thinking of, because I think she was there as well, and you were referencing her. She was in the audience. Oh, I yeah, said, that's that, that interview. Yeah, she and Lisa Langlois came to that yeah. screening with me. And okay. um, so I, I did reference her. Um, because I'm friend, friendly with her. And so um, we know the the fuzz on the lens guys who did were the guys behind Abnormal Attraction. Mm -hmm. They're also the guys behind um, Terrifier, the Terrifier movies. Um, ah, I, you know, I'm, yeah. that's what, I've been trying to get in touch with that guy because it, I'm yeah. mad because I met him five Michael years Levy. ago or so. Yeah. And I didn't realize who he was. I said, oh, a little clown movie. That's okay. And then I saw Terrifier yeah. too. I said, this is excellent. I love oh, yeah. it. Yeah, and, yeah, they're doing it. They're doing it, those guys. Yeah. yeah. And I'm so mad because I I just like I did with you, I messaged him on Facebook and I haven't heard anything back yet. But yeah. I could, if, and you you're him, talking about Mike Michael Levy? Uh so who's the writer and director? Is that Michael Levy Michael yeah. Levy, Jason Levy, and uh, uh Steve De, uh, Stephen Della Sala. It was Michael Steve Delis It was Michael, Michael. Levy, yeah. He's and the then sort it was, of, uh, the, the one yeah. who played Art the Clown too. I reached out to him. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know him, but uh but Michael Levy, I can put in a word for him to Please. get in touch with you. You're you my new best to... friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We all have to work together. <laughs> we have to rename the show. It's yeah. Just... <laughs> Leslie's Les... Tribe. <laughs> said the Claws Corner, Leslie's Corner, <laughs> with host Rich Sarah. Hot in the corner. <laughs> yes. I'm just gonna call it, you know what? Leslie's Friends. That's the new yeah. name of the show. Leslie's Friends, exactly. There you go. <laughs> yeah, please. I, I I never saw the first one. I, mean, I did see it now, but I went to a theater. I said, let me just check this out. There's so much hype about it. And I, I was so impressed with that. It was just so much yeah. it was like a fun, over the top. Yeah, movie. it is. Yeah, 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 it is. And that's what abnormal attraction is too. It's kind of along those lines. It's where humans and fairy tale creatures. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because I met them back in 2014. 2013 at a Arkansas film festival hmm. and I went to and they came outside and they said hey we want to do a short about like an AA meeting which character would you want to have as your best friend if it was a fairy tale and I said well I'm always been partial to Little Red Riding Hood so I guess the wolf and he goes so we're going to write this we're going to write like an AA meeting and and you're talking about your addictions but your addictions are to fairy tale characters and they said does that, does that sound cool to you? And I said, yeah, just as long as my char character can open her first line by saying, hey, fuck face. <laughs> they said, <"Run." laughs> That's how I opened my, my mouth. I said, hey, fuck face. You know, and then so to Bruce Jameson. And so, <laughs> I just love like how you, some people's list of demands are like, I want a car. I want the yeah. biggest trailer. I just want to <laughs> say, hey, fuck face. <laughs> That's all I asked for. That's it. I want loads That's of money. I don't care about the money. Just let me say yeah. hey, fuck face. Yeah, as long as I can say that line at some point in, in this show, that'll be good. And I do. They wrote it. <laughs> so thanks, Michael. <laughs> That's just got, that's when you when you write your autobiography. It's got to be the name of your autobiography. Yep. Hey, hey fuck fuck face. face. <laughs> that could be the title of my autobiography for sure. <laughs> I love that it. Or what? <laughs> So you you you're working on those things. Have you yeah. 
Um, have you written anything else that people can, like, have you written books or have you just written screenplays? No. Just started writing uh, screenplays. Um, I used to dab dabble in writing lyrics when I was younger. Uh. Poetry, poetic lyrics, I guess. Uh, I don't do that much anymore, but I just started getting into writing. I mean, I just started, you know, you, just, you write what you know, you write about yourself. I mean, mm -hmm. there's tons of shows that are happening now that uh, that are based on, you know, there's one called The Pradeeps in P Pittsburgh, which is getting filmed. And it's a, based on the guy's experience coming from India and moving to the States and how yeah. he gets harassed and how he, you know, but he's made it funny. He's like, so it's sort of like Robert Jungle is about our life in the Upper West Side Manhattan playgrounds. Um, his is about moving to the States with his family. Yeah. So you write about what you know. And so uh, hopefully people see the authenticity in it and they, you know, somebody wants to make it, hopefully. Yeah. Well, I know in the last couple of years, two examples I could think of right off the bat would be Bill Burr came out with an animated cartoon based on his life and Chris Rock has a TV show based on his life. So yeah, it seems like, yeah, as you said. That's what you do. Yeah. 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 It's the way to go. And you also produce movies. I produced a, uh, a media thing on uh, YouTube, a uh, new media um, web film called High Falls. And that's where I met Maria Nieto, who is my other writing partner. She co-produced it with the director, Amanda Cole. And um, yeah, I, I managed to just jump into the water without seeing whether there was water there first with that. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's, it's, no, okay, right, let's just do this. <laughs> See, I have the same mentality. It's, yeah. It's like you just you can't be afraid or can't even think about it. Just yeah. do it. Just and do it. Yeah. So many times I've done things, and I'll say my I <laughs> I I have cerebral palsy. So uh, when I was hmm. doing stand up comedy, that led somebody saw my act and said, you know what, you'd be a huge inspiration to in my students. And he works at a place called Abilities yeah. Beyond. So I go there and I talk to them, and Good. tell. So then that I did um that led to doing other things at libraries, and I did a show. There's a Palace Theater in Waterbury, which is a bigger nice. venue. And, but one of the things I always said, it was that I never say no. I'm like, yes, never yes, say no. yes. Yeah. And what, and sometimes things will fail and who cares because that opens the door to something I never even knew existed. So exactly, that, I mean, for sure. That would be me. I, I wrote, I have a self-published book on uh, Amazon. It's a fictional book, five short stories that oh. I was doing interviews on. It's going through the circuit and different radio stations that led to me taking over a radio show that led to me doing Sam, you know, so all, all these nice. things yeah. I've done, which led to me talking yeah. to you right now on my YouTube channel. So yeah, I, that's right. Yeah. I have that mentality and I love that because so many people are like, yeah. I wish, or I don't know. It's like, don't even think about it. Don't just think about do it. it. Yeah. Well, that's what I remember hearing Tina Fey talk about it. That she, when she started just saying yes to everything, even if she didn't think she could do it or whatever, that's when things open up. Yeah. Hey, so yeah, you just got to take everything you can and do and see what you can do with it. And if you can't do it, then you just, you can't do it, you know, yeah. but at least you tried. Yeah. 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 I always said, what's the worst they're going to say either no, or I mean, like if I, yeah. like when I was doing Sam comedy, I'm like, oh my God, that takes courage. I'm like, no, not really. If they don't yeah. laugh, well, I'm sure there'll be an audience that laughs tomorrow, tomorrow's show. I mean, who yeah, cares? yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah I always say can't. it's like, I think it's funny. So that's all that matters to me. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. For sure. Yeah. You know, you know, it's going to work. And, you know, yeah. so, um, yeah, they just, uh, I just try to take every opportunity. Yeah, I can no, definitely. So yeah. then that being said, what's next? Well, I'm working on trying to get somebody interested in these. Yes. <laughs> scripts. Um, and I just, I'm auditioning and I, I do other things. Like I do events and stuff like that, where I, work the event and that and uh just trying to you know keep positive and keep hopeful yeah i think it's so far knock on wood it's gotten off to a good start this year so all right yeah so um i you know no complaints no yeah. complaints okay. you've you've we've talked for the last two hours and you've yeah. done a lot so you've done yeah. if you had to pick anything between behind the scenes writing producing stage tv movies what would be your all-time like what what's your favorite well uh i love i love acting i love it yeah. um so i wouldn't want to get that up but um i really like to have more control about what gets out there like for me like i would i i would like to see one of these shows or even other people's scripts so producing i guess maybe producing because yeah. i'm getting older and it's, you know, it's harder to uh, get work at my age because what they do is, and rightly so, and they should, is they usually give it this like, like waitress thing that I'm going to do later. We'll probably go to a, a minority 
person mm -hmm. before it will go to me. And yeah. that's that's good because it used to be the opposite. It used to they never got anything. So yeah. it makes sense. So I get it. So it's harder to get work. But I'd rather be able to be more creative and hands on in terms of like getting content out there because I see a lot of repetition. Yeah. And it's like, really? They're doing another Spider Man? Did I'm still on the Tobey Maguire Spider Man. No, see, that was my favorite. I'm a huge Sam Raimi fan. And that's really the only one I like. Yeah. I'm like, I'm still not over that one. Why are, why is it Tom Holland? Is he very good? But why are we doing another one? Like, exactly. Can't we just live with the one we already had? Like, what's going on here? So I, I'm of the, the Scorsese mind. I just feel like, you know, the big movies are superheroes. That's it. Oh, There's not, I, or, or horror movies, horror movies. They, uh, there's a lot of great horror directors out there these days, you know, Ari Aster and uh, the guy that did The Witch and, you know, the, the horror is moving in a whole different, you know, a uh, whole different way now. It's not just slashers. And I find slashers the comedies of horror. Yeah. Yeah. I agree it, with you. Like the I, slapstick comedies of horror. Yeah. Like Which horror. I enjoy. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Like you, you mentioned Dario Argento. Are you a Lucio Fulci fan? Uh, I know the name, but no, I mean, I'm not really even a big Jalo fan, to be honest with you, but, um, uh, he's the, just, I pulled his name out because he's the most famous yeah. of them, of the, that genre. Well, the reason I mentioned that was Argento's more cerebral. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's just all out blood, gut score. And so he's more, and I enjoy both, but yeah. if I had to pick one, I love a suspenseful technological thriller, psych yeah. psychological thriller. I mean, yeah. and I'd rather see that has a great story to it with some blood than just an all out slasher. But then I like, yeah. as I mentioned, I love Terrifier. Yeah. Because it yeah. was just an all out slasher, but it was fun. They didn't take themselves seriously. That's why I love No, they don't. That's true. And, and you just, it, there's something that's bizarrely endearing about that clown with his big smile. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's horrible. He's what he does is horrible, but he does it with such panache that you like, <laughs> go for it, man, go do it. Just go do, you know what I mean? Like you get, you get into it with him. <laughs> I know, I'm actually rooting for him by the end of the movie. Yeah, it's like a big <laughs> smile on his face. He's great. He's a he's he's an instant overnight you know sensation. Well, I want to see. I don't know where it came out. I don't know if you, if it's in your area, but he supposedly made a movie called "You're a Mean One." It's a horror movie of the Grinch, and it's oh really? Yeah, I saw wow. the trailer for it, and I said I was waiting for it to come out around Christmas time. Yeah, and it didn't never came to out. Video? Looking, yeah, yes, yeah, it might be direct to video or streaming. Yeah. So but I definitely want to yeah. check that out because he is, it, I mean, it similar to the Jim Carrey look of the Grinch, but a, yeah. what happens was uh, um, Cindy Lou who he kills her parents and she gets revenge when she grows up and she right. was after okay. the Grinch. So it, but nice. it's similar to, I'm not sure if it's, it's, I don't think it's the same people behind the scenes that did that movie. I don't think Michael Levy or anything to do with it. He oh, might yeah, have, yeah. but I know he it's definitely have. the guy who played Art sure. the Clown. Yeah, yeah, I'm. I'm not sure. He might have. He might have been a part of that. He's. I know he's got a lot of projects going. So, uh, he's. Is they're they're doing really well. So, which is great. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's you know, the horror movies now, like Midsummer, that freaked me right out. Yeah. <laughs> and Hereditary. Why she wasn't nominated? Yes. Tony I love for that, that movie. Uh, is mind blowing to me. And, and, you know, and I hope that the young girl gets nominated for Pearl. Uh, Mia yes. Goth. She did Mia really Goth well is great. I love Pearl and I love X. Those two. Yeah. And I can't wait for the third one to come out. Is there a third one coming out? Yep. Yeah. At the very, very end, just like they did with the end of X, you saw like the, the Pearl um, coming yeah. attraction. They did one. Mia Goth, yeah. Yeah. So it's going to yeah. be I, Mia Goth. I just saw a trailer for her, too. I don't know if, if she just started acting recently, or, but I see her name all over the place now. She yeah, yeah. She writes um acts yeah. so yeah she's, yeah, she's, she's hands-on yeah she's yeah. hands-on a lot yeah she's good um so that you know there's that it's it's there's it's wide open you know to the types of things what you can do in hard you know what it is and somebody made this comment i think it was it might have been kevin smith that said this and i, I it's so true they don't the producers don't even really care how, what the movie the content of the movie is all they care about is that that name gets people in the seats so they'll yeah. do a remake they care less how it does there's like oh boy another happy birthday to me let's get people yeah. that love that in the 80s come see it now and then like the movie is new people stop, yeah. yeah stop yeah. doing the like, reboot stop doing the remixes stop doing yeah. the remakes just yeah. come up with, like you said different. come up with something original like you said yeah. midsummer and hereditary are two perfect examples oh, totally. by that one director yeah and he's got another one coming out with joaquin phoenix i think 
Oh, really? That one I didn't see yeah. the trailer for yet. Got to check it I out. Think it's, I think it's Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, he's in it. Who's an amazing actor, exceptional actor. So, yeah. Did you ever get a chance to work with him or meet him? Oh God, no, no. no. I, I, I'd love to. <laughs> yeah, no. He's he's definitely he's one. Pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, I, I saw your list of actors that you like. I think it was with Daniel Day Lewis. It was yeah. uh, Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman, yes. Yeah. You know, it was one of my, I didn't see on the list. I want your opinion on him. I don't really care about his personality, but I think one of the best actors around right now is Christian Bale. Oh, yeah. That guy's oh, totally. a chameleon. Yeah, he is. I mean, he's very good. Gain 50 pounds, lose 80 pounds. Yep. I mean, he was yep. Dick Cheney. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see that, but I, I saw trailers for it and yeah he was i mean he really embodies his characters he's he's an amazing actor amazing. yeah yeah because yeah. like your list had a lot of the same people that i like when i was yeah. looking at that so. yeah yeah Kate Winslet, Daniel day lewis Dana day lewis oh god gary oldman yes gary oldman my mother we went to see jfk and my mother turns to me she goes oh look they've got original footage of oswald i went no mom that's gary oldman she went what like <laughs> i said that's gary oldman you know, the same with Sid and Nancy. He embodied Sid Vicious really well, too. So he's just a really good actor. Oh, but True Romance, too. Did you see that? True Romance, yeah, where he was the, the guy that thought he was black. Yeah, the drug dealer. <laughs> and that was written by Tarantino. I know. That was written by him. Yeah. Yeah. And so, that's the yeah. kind of stuff I like to do. I want to do stuff like that. All right. Well, we're, we got to yeah. make this happen. We gotta... We're going to make this happen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I wish I had some friends I could help, but. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's all good. It, it's good. It's, well, Leslie, it was so great talking to you. I had so much fun. Nice talking to you too. It was a blast. Yeah. Do, is there before we leave? Is there anything that I missed that you want to go over? No, I think you covered a lot of it. Yeah. A lot of it. These stuff. I was like, oh yeah, that. Oh yeah. <laughs> like I said, I spent the. I got in touch with you about a week and a half ago. I spent the yeah. last week just going through everything, reading everything, oh, going, watching. I, I yeah. love it. Yeah, good. Well, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to do that. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. we we'll definitely have to have you back on the show. When, next time for we'll sure. talk about your uh, upcoming movie that you wrote, produced, directed, and starred in. I can't wait to hear about that. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> it's Until nice meeting then. you. Yes. Say bye to Sarah for me. Oh, I definitely will. That okay. wraps up the latest episode of The Claws Corner. A huge thanks goes out to Model actress of both stage and screen, writer, producer, voice actor, and the next big thing in Mexico, Leslie <laughs> Donaldson, for taking time out of her busy schedule to be a guest on my show. I also need to thank editor extraordinaire John Bristol of Elmwood Productions for always doing a superb job editing this show each and every week and making it available to all. And lastly, but definitely not least, I need to thank you, the viewer, for always tuning in. Enjoy your day, everyone. Diaphragm again? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ha! We caught one. They're supposed to be weird. Oh yeah, no. If you say so. I've always wanted to be in a movie. Waiting around for all of them. Waiting around for all of them.